Fitness is always better with friends. It is Saturday at Bayfront Park as we kick off day number three at Tier One Palooza here in Miami, Florida, and we are about to hand things over to the elite teams of three. Thanks for being with us, everybody. I'm Sean Woodland alongside Brian Friend. Lauren Khalil is out there at the Bayside stage. Now, earlier today, the competition for the elite teams got kicked off with an off-site event. Not a bike in sight, but it was called Bike Race because it was on a 5K bike trail, Brian. Absolutely, had a chance to go out there, talk to a bunch of these athletes before they ran and afterwards. Absolutely beautiful course, extremely well marked, impossible to get lost. It was cool this morning, nice conditions for running, but this was a tough trail run. All the athletes said, expect three to six minutes slower than your 5K time on a track. So when you see the scores on the leaderboard, that's the explanation for the times. And the times were the cumulative times for all three team members. We have the women's results and it's NGH. They come in with the best cumulative time at one hour, 14 minutes, 0.25 seconds. The trio of Nicole Crouch, Ruborg Valdima's daughter, and Katie Brock. The Lifters girls, they finished in second, followed by Lycan Gang, RX Performance, and Team Barreen. The men's scores are still being reviewed, so we will have those when we get them. But now we turn our attention to Bayside for Worms Can't Swim. There's a lot of work with the worm here, Brian, but a lot of strategy as well. Absolutely, the teamwork will be required with the worm, but you, every athlete has to get in the water on their own, and ultimately, I think if you have one athlete that can't swim, it's going to bring you to a halt real fast. With that being said, what are the keys to success here in Worms Can't Swim? Worst first, I would say, get the, the best swimmer in the water when they have had the least amount of fatigue built up, and uh, it pays to be a swimmer. The teams that do have three good swimmers in the water are going to have a big advantage over everyone else. Heat one of two is getting set. The teams are taking their position on the bars there at Bayside. Lane 14, that's the U.S. Army Warrior Fitness Team. They actually competed together last year, but not as an elite squad. Correct. They were in the RX division, placed fifth there. They've moved up to the elite division through the qualifiers this year, and it's cool to see the exact same team coming back and, of course, rep representing the U.S. Army of Warrior Fitness, who is a staple in CrossFit competitions at this point. Uh, Sidney Moskowitz is in front, followed by Ava George and Emma Hervang. We had some swimming yesterday for the individuals. The water's a little rougher today than it was yesterday. So that's an additional factor that these athletes will have to negotiate as they work their way through this event. Three, two, one. Heat number one is underway, and we start with the 30 worm clean and jerks. And you see already that some of the athletes are barefoot. Some of them have shoes on. It could be a clue to who is planning to get in the water first. I actually spoke with some of the RX athletes who had a very similar workout, just a slightly lighter worm. And some of the athletes that swam last and didn't wear shoes said that their feet were paying the price for it a little bit. There is the U.S. Army Warrior Fitness team. They're working out of lane number 14. Next to them in lane 15 is the Leap and Lemurs, Taylor Koss, Sammy Scorzelli, and Marissa Gonzalo on the right side in the all black. The 30 reps they need to complete here, then one team member will head out on that swim while the other two complete those 50 synchro burpees over the worm. often have worms in competition, but they come in different shapes and sizes. The women have a total of 220 pound worm that they'll deal with. The men later today will have 312 pounds for the worm. Always kind of nice to put into perspective just exactly what these athletes are doing. It's not as clear cut as a, as a barbell. Team Treta right now leads the way there through 14 of those initial 30 worm clean and jerks. And Team Treta actually Composed entirely of masters athletes, 38, 42, and 38 years old. Really impressive to see them out here competing in the elite division. There are masters divisions here, and they could be doing that, but they're good enough to make it and compete against the best. Yeah, Nita Pravati, Vivi Aiello, and Tata Rebain, the trio from Team Treta. 24 minute time cap here. They are in the Team Treta now, having trouble with that worm, and they've got to dump it. Now they get to kind of get themselves sorted out here. 
17 of 30 reps done for them. Mile high muscles in lane 12 starting to creep up. They are on the far left side of your screen. They have the worm down to take another look at the U.S. Army Warrior Fitness Team. That mile high muscles team, uh, you may have seen a few of them at semifinals in the past as individuals out here competing as a team this year. Madison McElhaney, Zoe Warren, and Elisa Shower on that team. It's one of the great things about Tier Wadapalooza. It, not only the format of the, the teams that makes this unique, but you often see Masters athletes out there on a team competing with the elites, also as individuals. As Team Trada now has themselves sorted and they're working through those initial 30 room clean and jerks. You know, 30 teams in this division, that's 90 total athletes. And between the 90 of them, the plethora of CrossFit experience that they have is vast and varied. Some of them team athletes, some of them usually individuals, but come together to do a team competition that Wadapalooza provides as an opportunity here. Leaping lemurs in lane 16. Their judge's hand is in the air, right side of your screen. They're working out of lane 15. That might be Firebarns Club. U.S. Army Warrior Fitness in lane 14, a couple reps away here from completing these worm clean and jerks. As is Team Trada. NGH in lane four. And that's Nicole Crouch in the green. She's going to head out for the swim first, it looks like. And what they have to do before they head out, they do have to go back to their chest piece and touch it. Then they make the run out to the swim. So NGH, Nicole Crouch will leave behind Valdemar's daughter and Brock to do those 50 synchro burpees over the bar, or over the worm, pardon me. Nicole Crouch is, was on a team this year in the CrossFit Games quarterfinals. Uh, one of her teammates decided to pursue another pass. We didn't get to see her at semifinals, but great to see her out here competing in Miami. She's a pretty well, a pretty well established team athlete out of the UK. About six teams have their first athletes into the water. That is Nicole Crouch on the left side as she was well ahead of the field behind her getting into the water first. Well, and I said worst first is one of the potential strategies here is obviously if you're one athlete that you don't know can complete the swim at all, that might not be the best strategy. But if you are confident that she can get it done, there's a long time cap here. Most of the teams in all divisions have been able to beat the cap. So letting her go and do that while she's least tired with two potentially good swimmers behind her is probably what's going on with NGH there. There are Valdemar's daughter and Brock in the middle of your screen going through their synchro burpees. And just kind of knowing how long that swim generally takes and knowing how long 50 burpees generally takes, I don't think that if you're doing the burpees, there's too much of a rush needed there. Just a nice steady cadence. Most likely you'll still have a few seconds to a few minutes, depending on the caliber of the swimmer, to rest and recover before the next set of worm clean and jerks. It's a team in lane 15 that is listed as Firebarns Club. Past the six minute mark. The lane three on our heat sheet is listed as empty, but there is clearly a team there. Try to get their identity for you. There's now some of the initial swimmers have made the turn and they're heading back to the Bayside stage. Yeah, we see Nicole Crouch there. She's still doing the breaststroke. She's kept her head above the water the whole time, but she's only been passed by one athlete thus far, or one team this far, and so she's going to make it through this swim and, and hope it, hopefully open up the door for the other two athletes on her team to potentially swim you know, with the freestyle that we see for most of the athletes there. And when she rejoins Valdemar's daughter and Brock, they will then have 20 worm clean and jerks that they need to complete. 
I believe that was Ava George from the U.S. Army Warriors fitness team that we saw leading the way on the swim. And there is the rest of her team in lane 14 going through those 50 synchro burpees. So Nicole Crouch, upper right-hand part of your screen. She was the first woman into the water, now falling back into fifth place unofficially. It is indeed Ava there, so she'll be the first one out of the water, and the pack has caught up to Crouch. Ava George got into the water third, so was able to work her team into the lead, and now she'll have to wait for Moskovitz and Hervang to complete those 50 bar-facing burpees. She'll go back to the chest piece, make the touch. And now they can start their 20 worm cleaning jerks, and Moskowitz and Hervang were kind of giving her the, hey, let's, let's get this thing hurried up here. And actually pretty good timing there, you know, one or two burpees remaining when she got back from the swim. And the swim was just announced as a swim. There was no specific distance. Uh, the, the competition team was kind of making that decision based on the choppiness of the water. It looked like they only went out and around the pink, so maybe a little bit shorter distance there. The U.S. Army Warrior Fitness Team, they are in the lead right now through the first round. Lane 11 on, screen, on the screen there, Limey Girls out across at Islesbury. And actually, Nicole Crouch's uh, teammate from this past season is on that team. All three of those athletes, Maddie Harris, Janie Garrett, and Charlotte Davies have experience in team competition in Europe. Nicole Crouch is back, and they are now in second place. So Crouch does her job and keeps her team towards the front here as they work through these now 20 worm clean and jerks. NGH on the right side of your screen. The team that won bike race earlier this morning to put themselves on top of the overall standings. The U.S. Army Warrior Fitness team is on the left. They currently sit in second as we are past the nine minute mark. And we see a lot of communication taking place here. This morning's event was that cumulative time, so you're kind of on your own as far as that stuff goes. But a lot of the team workouts that we'll see throughout the remainder of the competition require synchro work, worm work, and communication, chemistry with your team, and being able to adapt on the fly is going to be a critical component of this team competition over the next two days. The three queens, they sit in third place. Lifter girls are now in fourth on their second of three sets of worm clean and jerks. Lane 11, the Limey girls. Lane number 10, that was Tori in black. The U.S. Army Warrior Fitness Team and NGH, they'll continue to battle for the top spot in this first of two heats here in event two. It's the second of six events that the elite teams will take on here at Tier Wadapalooza. They have one more remaining this evening and then three on Sunday. Great shot of the barge there. We spoke about it yesterday when Tommy was out there, gave us a little history that we have seen a barge at Wadapalooza before. It was further out from the shore here. They've, this year they've moved it all the way up, and as you saw in the intro, it really provides a great experience for both the fans and the athletes as the fans are just cascading down upon them as they're doing the, the worm clean and jerks here. Yeah, and the worm's there. 222 pounds for the women, about 70 pounds in each section. There are always filler bags in between those sections as well. The RX men's team used these, whim these weights earlier today, left them out there for the women, and the men will use heavier versions later on today. NGH is now done with their second 20 world clean and jerks, and that's going to be Katie Brock, who will head out on the swim. NGH regains the lead that they surrendered to the U.S. Army Warrior Fitness Team. Mile High Muscles, they actually have their second woman out now as well. Katie Brock competing out of New Zealand in the Oceanic region. She's got team experience at semifinals and individual experience there. And we saw some Oceanic women do great in the water yesterday. We'll see what Katie's got when it comes to the swim. U.S. Army Warrior Fitness. Now sending their second athlete out as well. I believe that's Emma Herbank who's getting into the water. It is nice and cautious going down there, and we'll see 
whether she's able to reel in the lead athlete as Ava George was able to do. Madison McElhaney going to be the athlete in third going down the board plank. McElhaney for Mile High Muscles with her team now in third place in this heat. The athletes remaining on the Bayside stage, 50 more synchro burpees over the worm. When their third teammate returns, it's another now 10 worm clean and jerks followed by a final swim, and then they close it out with five final worm clean and jerks. Past the halfway point here of this first of two heats for the elite women on the opening day of team competition here at Tier Wadapalooza. And yeah, McElhaney has become a regular at semifinals in North America. She was 10th at the Granite Games three years ago. She's made it to semifinals three consecutive years. She has competed on a team here before, so a very seasoned experience or athlete in both team and individual competition across North America. More women making their way into the water for their second of three swims. Top three remain NGH, U.S. Army Warrior Fitness, and Mile High Muscles. Does, does look like Katie Brock is maintaining that lead over Harvink there, who's doing a little side stroke, maybe just catching her breath as she rounds the buoy. I'll be curious to see the timing here relative to the burpees compared to the swim. I think that in that first interval, they kind of learned just how long that swim takes, and they could maybe increase or decrease the cadence on the burpees accordingly, especially if they know that they have a good swimmer that's going in there and they maybe don't want to you know, be forcing that athlete to wait on them when they return. It's Nicole Crouch and Gubjorg Valdumer's daughter on the synchro burpees, and Valdumer's daughter will be swimming the anchor leg for her team. And a cool thing about the online qualifier for Wadapalooza this year is that the way they designed those workouts, you actually didn't have to be in the same place, and that's how we're able to see a team that consists of three women from all over the globe competing here together in Miami. NGH team is a UN of fitness. As the leaders are starting to wait, make their way back to Bayside here. Sidney Moskovitz and Ava George working through their burpees. It does look like Harving has closed the gap a little bit on Brock, so not too big of a lead there. And McElhaney hanging tough right behind him, so the three teams will be pretty close here. The worm clean and jerks, remember, go down in reps every time. They've already done 50 total. They only have 15 remaining, 10 and then a final five at the end. So that last swim is going to be at even more of a premium. Katie Brock is making her way back to her team, and NGH are finished with their burpees, so they'll be able to get right to work on those worm clean and jerks. Meanwhile, U.S. Army Warrior Fitness Team Emma Hervang is back from the swim, but George and Moskovitz are still working through their set of 50 synchro burpees. And a great job by NGH there, making that adjustment from round one to round two and making sure that when the swimmer returns, they can get right to work on the third set of clean and jerks. NGH on the right now, final 10 worm clean and jerks before Valdirmer's daughter will make her way into the water. She is in the back here. Meanwhile, in lane 12, the Mile High Muscles have moved themselves into second place. The trio of Elisa Shower, Madison McElhaney, and Zoe Warren. Didn't see who swam first for them. We know McElhaney was the second swimmer, so we'll see who the anchor leg ends up being once they finish these 10 clean and jerks. NGH, meanwhile, is halfway through, now more than halfway through that final set of worm clean and jerks after this rep. The right side of your screen in lane number 12, that's the mile high muscles. They are putting some pressure here on NGH. Yeah, Lisa Shower on that team has three CrossFit Games appearance in the team division, competing out of CrossFit Omnia. They are a really tr a true and affiliate team that has continued to have excellent performances despite the kind of superstar nature of teams over the past couple of years. And if she's the last one in the water, they might be a, a little bit have a chance here to, to close things out and maybe catch that NGH team. Now NGH is done. And Valdirmer's daughter makes the touch on the chess piece and she'll have head out into the water for the final swim, and her team looking to go back to back here. This is the first of two heats, but they're looking to set the time to beat with one heat remaining. Yeah, and uh, she's an athlete that I don't know too much about. She's relatively new to competition, but you can see there she's very tall. She looks like she has a body of a swimmer. And, you know, if, uh, if that's the case, then absolutely they could be set up for a heat win here to back up the event win they had this morning. 
The Brock and Crouch working through their 50 synchro burpees. Odimer's daughter heading into the water. And we're gonna probably get a pretty good idea here right off the bat, and that's a nice long stroke, and she's settled right into that swim. I don't think it's gonna be very easy to catch her. And I do think that shower that's heading to the water, as I said, she's competed at the games three times. You don't get to swim all that often in CrossFit. She certainly has experience with that. And I'm guessing that she's gonna do well in the water, but look at how far ahead. Gudborg already is, that's gonna be really difficult to track down and only five clean and jerks at the end of this, so it's looking real good for NGH. NGH continuing to work through their 50 synchro burpees. That's Crouch and Brock. Mile High Muscles currently sit in second. In the background there in the pink shorts, you see Sydney Moskovitz walking away, so US Army Warrior Fitness team is sending their third athlete to the swim. Valdemar's daughter just happened to lap somebody. She's still way out in front on the right upper right-hand part of your screen. And they're doing all this with their first athlete doing breaststroke on the first interval. It makes me feel good about this kind of uh, anticipation that getting your worst swimmer in the water first is probably a really good player. We say how tired the athletes are coming back from the swim. And if you've got 50 or 60 worm clean and jerks deep, it's only going to make that swim much, that much harder. And Nicole Crouch in the green was the first woman out for her team. And I mean, it wasn't pretty, but it was effective. And her team is now in the lead right now as Valdemar's daughter has made the turn and is heading back to the Bayside stage. The woman immediately behind her, she's finishing her second swim. Elisa Shower is in the back, just rounded that pink buoy. She currently sits in second place for Mile High Muscles. And I think that uh, Gulberg and Elisa are swimming at a very similar pace here. It's just that's the amount of list distance that uh, Gulberg had ahead of her entering the water. And both teams still have their other two athletes working on those synchro burpees over the worm. Sean, we saw this a little bit on the individual side of things, but uh, on the bay here, there's no run to the finish. So these last five clean and jerks will end the competition or end, get a time, log a time for each of these teams as they come to the worm for the final time. Valdemar's daughter is back, and now she's got to wait on Nicole Crouch and Katie Brock to finish up those synchro burpees. And then it's five final worm clean and jerks. The final rep will end once it hits your shoulder, the worm hits your shoulder on the opposite side. Five reps remaining now for Crouch and Brock. Mile High Muscles still working through their 50 synchro burpees, and I believe Shower is still in the water. At least Shower now is out of the water. So the pace on the burpees is going to come into play here in that last interval. With, if you do have your fastest swimmer last, there is a potential that you could get back and still be waiting on your teammates there. Now Shower just getting back to her team. NGH has already started their final five reps. So they're just ahead of the team on the right, Mile High Muscles. This should be the final rep for NGH, looking to set the early time to beat, and that will do it. 2041 unofficially for them. What a great day one for Nicole Crouch, Gubdorg, Valdumer's daughter, and Katie Brock. Now Mile High Muscles are done. Yeah, only about 15 seconds behind, a really good performance there by them as well. Obviously one heat to go, so getting a good score on the board in this heat, very important. Less than three minutes to go before we hit the 24 minute time cap. Two teams have finished, it's NG Asian Mile High Muscles. Mile High Muscles with an 11th place this morning, so respectable, about a third of, you know, 30 athletes, 30 total teams in this field, so close to the top 10 there and a good second place finish in their heat. Also a pretty good start to the competition for them. And George and Hervang are waiting for Sydney Moskowitz to get out of the water. You just saw her, she was on the left side. That's a member of the Kolesnikov team getting out of the water. Asian Zarazova going back to join her squad. Yeah, Zarazova was, has been on the Kolesnikov team at the games once. 
Keshnia on that team has been there twice, and they've joined with Kamila Takeyeva, the fittest woman from Kazakhstan. Sydney Moskowitz is now in the middle of your screen for the U.S. Army Warrior Fitness Team. Her teammates are done and waiting on her to get back here so they complete their final warm clean and jerks. So the U.S. Army Warrior Fitness Team, they're out front early, but they've fallen back here in the final portions of this event. Because now we have about 90 seconds to go before we hit the 24-minute time cap, and here comes Moskowitz. And only five warm clean and jerks, so I do think they'll be able to finish under the time cap. We talked about potentially sending your worst swimmer out first being a strategy for some. Obviously, a lot of strategy in this workout, and Ava George seemed to be their best swimmer, and they sent her first, so a little different strategy there, but still looks like it's going to yield a result that's good enough to finish under the cap. Kolesnikov and Torian Black also finishing up here. Now the U.S. Army Warrior Fitness Team, they are onto their final five worm cleaning jerks. Yeah, we didn't talk much about the Torian Black team, but they're also out of Australia. Christy Hollard and uh, Bryony Chalice competing in the individual elite division the last two days, joined by Amy Alessi and Christy Hollard had a great swim yesterday, so not surprising to see them do pretty well here too. Final couple reps here for George Moskovitz and Herbang for the U.S. Army Warrior Fitness Team, and they are done. 23-18.32 seconds for them. The final 30 seconds here in the first of two heats for the elite women's teams. The second event of the day, six total over these next two days. And this three-person team format has really been sort of the staple of Tier Wadapalooza for the last couple of years. Yeah, really, uh, you know, for many years before that as well, they made an adjustment during the sanctional eras to teams of two men and two women so that they could qualify a team to the games. But with the reemergence of it, a resurgence of it last year, elite athletes have taken big advantage of that. And that is the time cap. NGH, they will set the time to beat. 20 minutes, 43.56 seconds for them. And they adhered to the strategy, Brian, that you suggested. Get your worst swimmer out there first, finish with your strengths, and it pays off for them. Yeah, we weren't sure of uh, really the capacity of the swimming here. They sent out Nicole Crouch first there in the green swimsuit, but also their chemistry on the worm. Really steady pace from beginning to end there. And for three athletes that compete in three different countries around the wor world, it's pretty cool to see them come together and have that synchronicity. The second two swimmers they got in the water were pretty consistent and it was just too much of a lead for anyone to do anything about. Here is Gudborg getting in the water last for their team and within a few strokes we could tell that she was proficient in the water and that they were going to have a heat win to back up an event win this morning out on the running course. Valdemar's daughter swimming the anchor leg and it was final five worm clean and jerks for them. Smooth sailing for NGH. And a heat win in a time of 20 minutes, 43.56 seconds. For them, it was the Mile High Muscles who came in behind them at 2057.32. These results unofficial. The Kleznikov team edging out Tori and Black for third, and then the Lifters girls rounding out the top five. Yeah, and as you can see there, and you'll see in the next heat, a very international field here on the team side of things. It's really cool to see a variety of different countries and regions of the world represented. 2043.56 seconds. One heat remains, and the athletes in the second and final heat are now making their way onto the Bayside stage here at Bayfront Park in Miami, Florida, as we continue day number three of competition to Tier Wadapalooza. Got a few athletes in this heat that competed the past two days, and several other well known athletes that have not. It's always fun to see how that ends up playing out. Sometimes you get in the competition groove after a couple days and it pays off. Sometimes being fresh is the way to go. Event number two for the elite teams is Worms Can't Swim. A ton of work uh, with the worm. And as we saw in that prior heat, a lot of strategy as far as who you put where in the swim order. Yeah, and uh, two of the you know two of the top teams had altered differing strategies there, but ultimately the team that won went with the worst swimmer first of their three. It doesn't necessarily mean you're a bad swimmer. It just kind of makes sense because you have done the least amount of work before you have to get in the water. 
and it definitely pays to be a swimmer. If you have three athletes that are good in the water, I think it's going to be pretty tough to beat you on this one. And one of those teams is Team Frog Grips. They're in lane nine. They have Emily DeRoy, Grace Walton, and Victoria Campos. And we saw what Grace Walton was able to do yesterday as an individual right here on the Bayside stage. Yeah, a pair of heat winners in the elite individual division. Emily DeRoy, who had been in the first heat, set the time to beat early on. There she is doing some of those beaded double unders. But when uh, the second heat took the floor, Grace Walton was an uh, unstoppable force on this one. Ended up with her first event win here at Tier Wadapalooza, and the duo from Australia have to be a team that we're watching here when the swim being, with, with the swim being such a critical component of this workout. Another team to watch is a team that has a ton of individual experience coming together to compete as a team. That's Team Ice Barrel. They'll be in lane at number 11, the trio of Brooke Wells, Bailey Rail, and last year's Tier Wadapalooza individual champion, Paige Powers. Yeah, just on the left out of screen there, but these three athletes have a ton of experience and a ton of swimming experience with uh, all of them competing at the CrossFit Games. And the CrossFit Mayhem athletes in general just seem to have been getting better and better in the water over the last five or six years. So I think that those are likely two teams who will be tough to beat and maybe challenge NGH for that overall top time. Some of the teams have shifted lanes from our uh, heat sheets that we were given. Team Ice Barrel is going to be in lane number eight. For more on that, let's go down to Lauren Khalil. Hey everybody, so the lanes have shifted down. Lanes one, two, and three are no longer empty. So our first team, Liking Gang, they will be in lane one. And then Krieger meets Training Culture, lane two, and so forth. And that's how we will keep an eye on these athletes throughout the second heat for the elite women. Thank you, Lauren. That certainly sorts some things out. Makes my life a lot, a lot easier. Appreciate that. And the teams are on the starting line, trying to track down 20 minutes, 43.56 seconds from NGH in heat number one. Good on that full shot there. You could see that graphic up behind the athletes as well. It's really nice for the fans as every division has rolled through Bayside this year. They changed the graphic to suit the reps and rep scheme layout of the workout for every division. It makes it uh, nice for the athletes, but a really nice feature for the fans that they've put up at Bayside this year. You are gorgeous. Nice shot of uh, Kelsey Keel, Kelly Baker, and Emily Lundberg there. Kelly? Kelly Baker and Kelsey Keel have been competing together on teams at Wadapalooza going back to 2016. Emily Lundberg and Kelsey Keel competed together on Team OBA that made the CrossFit Games and had a top 10 finish this year. We referenced that there's going to be two dense warm workouts, a lot of synchronization and communication re required, and the chemistry that Keel has with both Baker and Lundberg could be a huge advantage over the next five events. And we are underway. We start with the 30 worm clean and jerks. That's Team Bahrain in lane 14, closest to the camera. Frederica Muller up, Astrid Tin, and Sila Zillow. He won out picks, no shock here. It's Team Ice Barrel. They are loaded with individual talent. So you take a look at Team Frog Grips. And more than likely, Victoria Campos is going to be the first woman in the water for that team. And then as long as she just gets home, Emily DeRoy and Grace Walton can really do some damage in the water. Again, we saw that happen yesterday in the individual competition. Absolutely. And it will be kind of fun if that Ice Barrel team gets out to a little bit of a lead. I mean, look, Bailey Ray and Paige Powers are very good swimmers in their own regard. But we want to see how just how good DeRoy and Grace Walton can be. Putting them up, if they a little bit of a deficit, if they could track down those swimmers, that's quite a feat. Team Marine in lane 14, next to them in lane 13 is base wellness. Katrina DiGiacomo, Madeline Brooker, and Emma Gardner towards the middle. Yeah, Emma Gardner had made a semifinal a couple years ago. Had a pretty good online qualifier, top five to get into here. Once again, the fan pick on the Heat 1 app. Team you're looking at now, Brooke Wells, Bailey Rail, and last year's individual Tier Wadapalooza champion, Paige Powers, who really used that performance to vault herself into one of her career best years. 
as an individual competitor, finish inside of the top, pardon me, inside the top 10 at the CrossFit Games. Yeah, the top of the individual women's field is so competitive. It's really difficult to push into the top 10. Paige was able to ride the momentum throughout the season and do just that. And I think that her training this off season has probably just improved. You know, she's still a very young athlete and already has shown that tremendous capacity. She's in a great environment down there in Mayhem. Her and Bailey Rail get along really well, train together every day. So I think the future is very bright for Paige Powers. Here's a look at Team Frog Grips, Emily DeRoy, Grace Walton, and Victoria Campos. Lycan Gang down in lane number one. Also putting in some solid work here. They are towards the front. Laura Sanchez, Maria Quintero, Diana Vicentelli. They're another team that we had here at Wadapalooza in the exact same makeup in the elite division last year. They went through the qualifier, I believe finished seventh there. And once again, have earned the right to compete out here on the big stage uh, in Miami. Lane 14, the team of Team Bereen, Frederica Mollerup, Astrid Tind, and Silja Zilo. This is a Butcher's Lab team out of Denmark. Astrid Tin making the CrossFit Games this past season, but that Butcher's Lab constantly is churning out impressive teams in the team competition in Europe. That is a gym that has been on the CrossFit competitive landscape for more than a decade. Yeah, and we've had a chance to work with Nico Rono, who trains at that gym and knows all of those athletes, and it seems like every single year they can just cycle in different athletes and be competitive in terms of qualifying one or two teams to the games. Both the Lycan Gang and Team Bereen have their first athletes out. I believe that is Astrid Tin who's going to be out first for Team Bereen. Yeah, and she is kind of the most experienced athlete in this field, but swimming is such a specialty skill, I couldn't really tell you if she's better or worse than the other two athletes in the water. My guess is that they're all going to be all right, though. The Lycan Gang. Their first athlete into the water, and they are in the lead. Laura Sanchez, Maria Quintero, and Diana Vincentelli leading Team Bereen right now. The time to beat once again belongs to NGH, the team that won the opening event of the Tier Wadapalooza Elite Team Competition earlier today, bike race. NGH's time here in event number two. Worms can't swim, 20 minutes, 43.56 seconds. The first of three swims here for the teams is now the two women remaining on the Bayside stage will go through 50 synchro worm burpees. Yeah, and the Lycan gang didn't have a tremendous finish on the swing workout last year, but their team chemistry with the worm is exceptional, so not surprised to see them get out to a good start here. But I'm curious to see if they've worked on their swimming in the last 12 months. And what we saw in the first heat, you know, the swim was not listed as a distance. So the athletes didn't necessarily know how long that would take. In the first interval, a few of the teams had their swimmer return, and the athletes were still working on the burpees over the worm. So we'll see here whether that holds true in the second heat. Most of the teams were able to make that adjustment by round two to kind of sync it up so that they could get back to work on their second or third sets of clean and jerks without wasting too much time. The leaders have made the turn on the left side of your screen led by the Lycan gang and it's Astrid Tind from Team Bereen in the swim cap there that's in second place. A little bit of breaststroke there from Astrid Tin, but she seems to still be hanging really tight and on the tail of Quintero. Worked just fine for NGH last heat. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Just keep moving forward and get back there, especially if you know that you have a good swimmer or two behind you. No problem at all, necessarily. Mahler up and Zillow on your screen now for Team Bereen, continuing to crank through those 50 synchro burpees, and they're just about done, looking like they're timing this right. And I don't know if they're doing this or not, but having a higher lane number puts you closer to entry to the water where you could potentially sneak a peek out there, spot your teammate, and realize, okay, we need to increase the pace, or maybe we have a little bit more time and we could slow down. If you're down on this side of the barge, you've got no chance to do that. That's Krager meets training culture in lane number two. Verena Evelyn Reimers, Carson Wolf, and Helena Avendano. The Lycan gang and Team Bereen out of the water at the same time. Quintero with a good sense of urgency there. We've seen a lot of athletes get out of the water looking exhausted. Quintero full of energy, running down the barge. I think her teammates are done, but she might have to go touch that chess piece still. 
Team Vereen is back. Astra 10 rejoining her squad, and they will now perform their 20 worm cleaning jerks. And Butcher's Lab really proficient on the worm. They have worms, obviously, in their gym there with the number of teams that they've had. And they host team competitions there every year as well. So I'd expect them to move very smoothly through all the worm cleaning jerks. Two hundred twenty-two pounds total on the Worm Lichen Gang on the left. Team Barine on the right. There, your top two teams in this heat. More teams working their way out of the water after their first swim. Looks like that was Brooke Wells for the Ice Barrel team. And right on the heels of Victoria Campos, those were the two teams that we featured in the run-up. Those were the two swimmers that we were the most concerned about. Not concerned, but just the other four are excellent. I still think both of those teams, knowing how good Paige and Bailey and Gracie and Emily are in the water, have a chance to reel in the leaders. The Lycan gang, you saw them struggling with the worm. That's lane 10. That's RX performance. Antonia Falk, Kodolinski, Maria Longfors, and Camilla Salmonson helmet team out of Sweden, Antonia Falk-Kodolinski, multiple years experience at the CrossFit Games. She's in the front there. She actually won the RX division of Wadapalooza a couple years back as well. So she's been out here before. Salmonson Hellman has been a comeback story this season. She made it back to semifinals after giving birth two years ago. She was in Dubai and she's getting some fun here in the sun with some of her friends from Sweden. And you know, the, the weather's quite nice here compared to what they deal with up there at this time of year as well. Top two teams on your screen. Lycan Gang's on the right. They're down in lane number one. On the left is Team Bereen. Lycan Gang had some problems with that worm. They've got themselves sorted, but they're starting to fall off the lead pace as RX performance has passed them for second place. Team Bereen continuing to lead the way here, and they have one remaining clean and jerk in this set of 20 before their second athlete will head out on the swim. RX performance was fourth place this morning in the run. Team Bereen fifth place, and they're tight again in event number two. That is Silja Zillow, who is heading out for Team Bereen's second swim. Lane 10 is RX performance. Now a couple reps ahead of Lycan Gang for second place. 2043.56. That's the top time from heat number one from NGH. There is Antonia falk Kodolinski heading out for the run, or for the swim, excuse me. RX performance. Second place, Lycan Gang. On the far left side of your screen, they're still working through their set of 20 worm clean and jerks. Yeah, a bit surprising there. The transition did seem like there was a little bit of confusion, and they've definitely fallen off the pace here on the second set of the worm. The lane nine stronger than the 90s trend. The team of Kelsey Keel, Emily Lundberg, and Kelly Baker also now done with their 20 worm clean and jerks. That's Team Bereen as Astrid Tind and Frederica Mollera work on their 50 synchro burpees over the worm. Stronger than the 90s trend. Also had a top 10 finish this morning. They actually are listed as tied for seventh in a cumulative Team 5K. It's kind of crazy to have exactly the same cumulative time, but that was the case, uh, in fact, the case along with Team Tretta. Left side of your screen, that's the Ice Barrel team. Paige Powers, Bailey Rail, and Brooke Wells. And for them, it's really a matter of just getting either Bailey or Paige in the water. But at this point, those leaders are quite a ways ahead, as we see halfway done with the swim, and they're still working through that second set of worm cleaning jerks. Sil Zillo is the woman who just made the turn there around the pink buoy for Team Bereen. And Antonia falk Kodolinski is now approaching that pink buoy and will make the right turn around and try to close the distance between herself and Zillo. And Zillo, not with the most efficient swim technique there, the head out of the water, not getting a good extension with the arms. I think Falt Kotolinski has a chance to reel her in or at least get pretty close. The Lycan gang now making the turn as well. They still are in the top three. Towards the back half now of this event, right side of your screen, that's Mollerup and Tind for Team Bereen. 
again, despite having the problem with the worm in that middle interval there, their swimming does seem to have improved quite a bit from last year. Very impressed with what I've seen from them in the water. Frederica Malara will be on the final swim for Team Boreen. Once Zillow gets back, they have 10 more worm cleaning jerks at that 220 pound worm. And then a final swim followed by a final five worm cleaning jerks. I mean, we, we've talked a lot about the worm. We've talked a lot about the swim. Like, don't overlook the fact that there are 100 burpees for every athlete in this workout. You know, that definitely factors into the fatigue. Lichen gang now on the right side of your screen as the leaders in this heat are starting to make their way out of the water for the second time. That's Cecilia de Zillo. And I would say job done for her there. She's maintained the lead. Both of those athletes going to be, you know, about 20 seconds behind. And it looks like relatively good timing as there's less than five reps remaining for her teammates as she's coming back to tag the chess piece. Bailey Rail for Team Ice Barrel now just got into the water. I, I, I have to guess that it's the worm that's slowing them down somehow. Bailey, a great swimmer, but that's you know, an entire swim is probably going to be too much to make up at this point. There's only 15 reps of the worm cleaning jerks left at this point. The leaders in this heat are on opposite ends of the floor. RX performance, they're fighting with the Lycan gang for second, and now. RX performance on the right side starting to push Team Barine for the lead in this heat. They have a much quicker pace as RX performance on that 222 pound worm. The 10 reps before the final swim. And we'll get a chance to find out what strategies were implemented here. If you have saved your best swimmer for last, it could definitely matter as this is going to be pretty close to a dead heat getting in the water barring any you know slip ups here at the last couple reps on the worm. Well, Team Barine is starting to fall back. One rep left for RX Performance on the right side of your screen. Now one rep left for Team Barine. RX Performance sending their final athlete out. I think yeah confusion there for Camilla Salmons and Hellman as she headed the wrong direction. Has to touch the chess piece, then come back through her lane, then around. Team Barine is now done as well with their 10 worm clean and jerks. And Frederica Mahler up right in the middle of your screen is now trying to get her way into the water. And there goes Camilla Salmonson Hellman trying to get the heat win here for RX performance. But she's got to track down the top time from NGH, 20 minutes, 43.56 seconds. That's Frederica Mahler up. Trying to catch up with Camilla Salmons and Hellman here. So a little bit of an advantage for Hellman, but Mahler up. Racing into the water, it's only about a five or 10 yard gap. So it's certainly the better swimmer is going to come out first here. Mahler up now. Looked like she's going to make the transition to freestyle, but back to the breaststroke here. And my guess is that she's just catching her breath. Obviously, she was going to go for the freestyle, so we know that she can. And that's Bailey Rail on the bottom left hand part of your screen for Team Ice Barrel now just getting out of the water. They still have one athlete to go here on the swim, and now they have. 10 final clean and jerks does Team Ice Barrel. Mahler up continuing to do the breaststroke there, allowing Solomons and Hellman to gain the lead a little bit. She tries for that freestyle again, but, but maybe just not able to catch her breath. Well, the fight for the lead is on the left side. In the blue cap, that's Camilla Solomons and Hellman making the turn around that tier buoy. Behind her in the pink is Frederica Mahler up. Just glancing at the clock there, knowing that about 2043 is the time to beat. This is looking really good for RX Performance. Now they're chasing NGH. They were first in the workout this morning. RX Performance was fourth. Depending on how many teams potentially help them out here, it could be really close to the overall lead as well. Camilla Solomons and Hellman now making her way back in the blue swim cap for RX Performance. And her team continues to work on those. 50 synchronized burpees on the right side of your screen. The pair of Antonia Falk, Kudelinski, and Maria Longfors. 
Camilla Salmonson Hellman looks like she's extending the lead that she had on Model Up in the pink swim cap when the two of them got into the water. Well, and Camilla was really cautious getting into the water, but maybe just buying a little extra time to catch her breath. She seems to be picking up momentum and speed as she goes. And just like in the first two, we see the top teams passing other teams who are still on their second swim. And as to our keys to the event, you really, if you got good swimmers in this one, you could get some massive separation. But meanwhile, the pair of Falk Kotalinski and Maria Longfors are done with their 50 synchro burpees. Once Salmas and Helmut gets back, they have five remaining worm clean and jerks. Team Barine also just about done with their 50 synchro burpees. Here comes Salmas and Helmut to join Falk, Kudelinski, and Longfors. That's Frederica Mahler up trying to get back to the Bayside stage here. Less than three minutes to go before we hit that top time from NGH. So this is looking good for RX performance. Looking to lock up 100 points and an event win here. They only have a couple reps remaining. And that is it. The RX performance is going to take it 18.03 unofficially, absolutely demolishing the top time from NGH. Well, and these next two teams are coming out of the water. They're definitely going to finish underneath that 2043 time. So at the worst case scenario for RX performance, they're going to have a fourth and first to go with NGH's first and fourth. So the worst place they could be in here is a tie for first after two events. Second place in this event still very much up for grabs for Team Bereen as 2043 is now the second best mark from heat number one. Five remaining worm clean and jerks for Mahler up Tindon Zillow. Lycan Gang, they are now through their third and final swim. Yeah, second and third in the seat. Probably going to be good enough second and third in the event. Really get impressive from all three teams. And that's it for Team Bereen. Good enough for a second place finish in the heat and a second place finish in the event. 1857.19 seconds. Lycan Gang can finish third now in the heat and the event. And they are done. Great performance from Lycan Gang. That's back-to-back -back third place finishes for them. That'll put them four points behind RX performance after two events. Uh, Team Boreen had two top five finishes, a fifth and a second. So those three teams plus NGH with excellent starts to their competitions. Lane 12 is Dixieland Delight. Taking a look at them going through their worm cleaning jerks. Dixieland Delight was the second qualifier in the Tier Wadapuza online qualifier this year, only behind Plus Ultra, who we haven't spoken about, but do consist of three games athlete, team game athlete in terms of Devin Kim, Kyra Milligan, and Jesse Smith. So Dixieland Delight maybe a little bit of a sneaky pick here this weekend. Less than four to go before we hit the time cap. And Dixieland Delight. is done with their oh, wow. set of 20. So they are way back towards the pack. They're sending their final athlete out onto the swim. Lane number seven, that's Scandinavian. They've had a few changes to their roster, but Rebecca Vittison is coming off a fifth place performance in the Elite Individuals yesterday. Incredibly impressive, super performance for her. And next to them in lane six is Team Frog Grips, one of the teams we expected to be battling for the win here. Yeah, we didn't get too much of a shot of them on the worm, but we, certainly if you struggle with the worm, it can slow you down, and no matter how good you are on the water, that can be tough to make up for, as we've seen already. Now Frog Grip. He's trying to close out, but I believe that was Scandinavian who just finished up. Should be a top five result for them. And now stronger than a 90s trend. Just saw them done. Kelsey Keel, Emily Lundberg, and Kelly Baker. Yeah, Scandinavian with a 10th this morning and maybe a 7th or so there. I think a couple times through the previous heat might have snuck in. But either way, that's not too bad. They'll probably be really good once we get to the more uh, barbell cycling, gymnastic style movements later on. Right side of your screen is Team Frog Rips. Left side, plus Ultra. They're now done. Kyra Milligan, Jesse Smith, and Devin Kim. 
And now lane six, Team Progress. They are in. Communication. Emily Geroy, Grace Walton, Victoria Compost. And Frogger's actually ran very well this morning, sixth place. And man, this is probably the surprise of the heat to me. Team Ice Barrel is now finished. Seventh place in the heat. We'll have to see where that falls overall in the event. Now Dixieland Delight. They're working through their final set of 50 synchro burpees. Just trying to get as much work done as possible before we hit that 24-minute time cap. Ladies, you've got 90 seconds. Handful of swimmers out here trying to make it back onto the bar. So I'm going to show. Less than 90 to go. Lane five, that is the Reebok crew. Alisa Pugliano, Allison Scuds, and Michelle Baznet. Allison Scuds had a podium finish here last year in the team competition for women. Uh, Fearless Misfits, you saw Paige Semenja trying to cheer back McKenna Enslin so they can try to get as many reps done here. They have a chance to finish to the Fearless Misfits. They only have five worm cleaning jerks here. Paige Semenza's in front. Paige Semenza, of course, a well-known CrossFit Games athlete. Kind of a fun fact on Jenna Michelotti. She's been at the CrossFit Games the last three years in the teenage division. Fifth place every year. That'll do. Krager meets training culture in lane number two. They're trying to finish up. Their third athlete has yet to join them. And the Fearless Misfits are going to get in inside that time cap. We have about 20 seconds to go now. And a handful of teams out there still working away. And that'll do it for Base Wellness on officially 23:45. Base Wellness, they get in. Emma Gardner, Madeline Brooker, and Katrina Dia Giacomo. And that will do it. But it's RX performance 1803.79 seconds to pick up the 100 points and their first event win here in the team competition at Tier Wadapalooza. Yeah, Salmons and Helman on the left, Langforce and Falk Kotolensky. Great performance there. You know, these athletes, have, uh, Paul Kotolinski has such good team experience, and I think seeing her at the front of the world there, probably being able to lean on that in terms of communication and chemistry, and they were all good in the water. And like we said, you have to be good on the swim here. Burpees certainly playing a factor as well. Pretty good test of fitness for a swimming test out on the barge. Second event of the day, and great performances so far for RX performance. It was Camilla Salmonson Hellman on the anchor leg in the swim. She was able to hold off the entire field. And it's an event win for RX Performance. 18 minutes, three seconds for them. Unofficial results here for Worms Can't Swim. NGH, they were the winners from Heat number one, their time falls down to fourth place. Team Barine and Lycan Gang rounding out the top three. Uh, Team Frog Rips, they'll take eighth in Ice Barrel. Two of the favorites coming into this event, they take ninth. And so we will, in fact, have a dead heat. RX Performance and NGH going 4-1 and 1-4 on the first two. Barine and Lycan Gang also, also at top five finishes. Not the teams that people were maybe looking at, but so far, those will be the top four teams. Let's send it down to Lauren Khalil with RX Performance. They just took a first place finish, a fourth place finish to kick off the day. What was the strategy when determining what order you ladies would go out for the swim? Uh, we decided that the uh, swim would be the like, least experience to go first, but like we all knew we were quite good. It was just a matter of like who is like the like little least like the worst swimmer, worst swimmer basically. A lot of different variables with this event when it comes to whether you decide to take shoes off, put them on, um, it's wet out here. Did any of you ladies actually take the time to put shoes on? No, we didn't. We just decided that we don't need like any equipment, it just takes time to switch. So no, no equipment. How was the body feeling after the run and now we had a swim, burpees, clean and jerks with that worm? 
actually really good. We're just super excited to be here and show everyone that we can really be with the top teams. So, I mean, we feel good. We're going to crush the next one as well. Awesome. We can't wait to see you guys. Congratulations. Thank you. RX performance, 100 points. As you said, Brian, tie atop the overall standings. Unofficially, it's 188 each for RX performance and NGH. The Lycan gang, they sit in third by just four. Team Barine is just eight points out of first, and it's stronger than the 90s trend, now sitting in fifth at 156. Yeah, no team Ice Bear in the top 10, and a lot of experience is up there. It's going to be an uphill battle to see if the favorites can pull it off with only four events remaining. Well, after 12 years of celebrating fitness, the Tier Wadapalooza is heading to SoCal. Huntington Beach will be the setting for our second flagship event this summer. Miami and SoCal. Tier Wadapalooza is now bi-coastal. Scan the QR code to learn more. Elite women are done. We'll be back with Worms Can't Swim for the men. Stay with us here as Tier Wadapalooza continues on Saturday. Obsessed with squeezing a little bit more out of me. I'm obsessed with taking really good care of me. I'm obsessed with wanting to be the best. There are a lot of potential paths to greatness. It starts with the hard work. A relentless commitment to self awareness. An obsession with forward progress. Anyone has what it takes to be the best. Only the best. Obsess. What does it mean when people say America is a land of opportunity? It means the power to discover. To redefine yourself. To improve yourself. To challenge yourself. To realize there's more in you than you ever knew that you could do. It means giving people an open field to explore what they do best. With the best tools. The best training. The best technology in the world. We bring out the best in the people who serve. So you can be all you can be.
stretch, squat, stroke, stride, swing, spin. That's movement, and this is you. And because you were made to move, we want to move with you. Whether you compete for a living or train for life, we've developed a cutting-edge movement experience that's unlike anything else. Because we, like you, are constantly evolving. Our reconstructed platform features daily mobility paths that can be tailored to fit your lifestyle and athletic goals at a time, space, and pace that works for you. We'll build your foundation in here so you can perform out there, work harder, perform longer, and recover faster. Pliability. What's your path? Saturday in Miami as the Elite Team Competition kicks off here at Tier Wada Palooza at Bayfront Park. Thanks for being with us, everybody. I'm Sean Woodland alongside Tommy Marquez. Brian Friend is out there on the Bayside stage as we are set for the men to take over for their second event of this team competition. It's Worms Can't Swim, a ton of work with the worm, a bunch of burpees, and a lot of strategy. Yeah, you're going to do some significant chunks of worm clean and jerks, but between the rounds, that's really the, the kicker here. One athlete's going to go up for the swim. Meanwhile, the two athletes left are going to do synchro worms, uh, synchro burpees over the worm. Every athlete is going to have to do that, and then you're going to finish with one more set of five worm clean and jerks. Keys to success here in Worms Can't Swim. Oh, man. Uh, it, like... Pays to be a swimmer, yeah, but worst first, you want to get the athlete that maybe isn't the best swimmer out in front because the total fatigue that's going to pile up over the end is only going to make that swim more difficult the further into the workout you get. First of two heats here for the elite men's teams of three. And lane number nine, probably one of the best names of the competition, the Foxed Ferret Manatee Men. Full of some talented athletes that we've seen compete at the games <laughs> as teenagers before. Yeah, you have a pair of teen games athletes and a former teen champ in Nate Ackerman and then so Daniel Coots, who's like also a teenage games athlete. But they're paired up with Joey Denison, an athlete who just missed semifinals last year. But he competed at Wadapalooza a couple years ago and finished 16th in the RX division. A very curious grouping. Joined in the booth by, by, by our very good friend. Always a pleasure to see you. Chris Hinshaw from Aerobic Capacity. How you doing, man? I think it's working now. Is it working? There Beautiful. No, I really appreciate you bringing me in for this event. Swimming, this event, I love it. Now we are underway. And we talk a lot about open water swimming as opposed to what it is in a pool. When you're working with athletes in open water swimming, what are the things that you try to get into their head right away so they can understand what they're dealing with? This is, it is shocking the number of requests that I get from elite level CrossFit athletes 
to manage the fear when they're hypoxic and jumping in the water. This level of fear, because I grew up swimming, was something that was very difficult for me to understand. This movement and this workout, what they're going to be doing is they're going to be hypoxic, meaning their demand for oxygen is exceeding what they supply, and they're gonna feel like they're gonna drown. If you've never done that before, you don't know what's about to happen. And this is an event that you have to have a little bit of experience because that drowning feeling is only gonna get worse as you progress through that swim. So the key, the number one key is, don't panic at the start. Calm that and then progress. Because if you're panicking at the start, it's gonna be a full panic attack by the time you're done. And there are the Fox Ferreted Manatee men, the trio of Nate Ackerman, Daniel Coots, and Joey Dennison, working through their first 30 worm clean and jerks. And to that point, we saw a lot of women walking to the water, trying to collect themselves as they made their way down that ramp and uh, on the swim. That's right. I mean, it is very, very important that you are patient, you're in control, because the five seconds that you lose by walking down that ramp, what you're doing is essentially calming yourself. You're taking deep, slow breaths, you're getting your breathing back in control. So when you make that jump, and I say jump, not dive, because you don't want the goggles to fall off. Any mishap is gonna take you down that negative path. This is a very uncommon combination of movements for these athletes, so it only amplifies the the kind of nervousness and fear factor for them because let's be honest we have a lot of individual athletes going team here even at the highest levels but in the history of the crossfit games at least a worm and a swim has only ever been paired together once and that was in 2015 with the water worm and that was the first and only time we've seen that and the swim has never been paired with burpees for the team competition at least in that one and again with the setting here and the barge and everything that waterpalooza and tier waterpalooza has done to make this a great experience. It also puts them in an unfamiliar waters as far as jumping in for that first time. We see this all the time in competition where an elite level athlete in their home gym dominates and then you throw in a bunch of mixed variables that they've never experienced before. They're under the big lights, they're on a moving barge. They're doing a combination of movements that they've never experienced. And what happens is, is fear. That adrenaline rush sinks in and then they have a tendency to underperform. And that's what's happening in this event. I love this combination because it's gonna challenge everyone. Complex Wadex and Conquer Athlete have their first men done. That's Tony Facchini for Conquer Athlete. Following Complex Wadex. Complex Wadex, the team of Mauro Acevedo Calvete, Ricardo Garcia, and Esteban Ospina. What Tommy said earlier about sending the weakest swimmer off first is absolutely correct. Because as this workout progresses, fatigue's gonna build. And the last thing as you wanna do as being the weakest swimmer is to enter that water last under the greatest amount of fatigue. Again, swimming is about confidence. The one positive in this event for these athletes is the water is warm. And that was very much the case for the individuals yesterday, too. I mean, it's a little bit overcast, but overall, there doesn't seem to be much of a current. The water's warm, and it's a fairly comfortable setting for them to swim. I mean, it's incredible. There's dolphins out there swimming right now. I mean, it's peaceful. And so if you take into those, those situations where it could be significantly worse, which we've seen in years past, this is a blessing for them. And that is a positive, but not if you're gassed. That's the pair of Mauro Acevedo Calvete and Ricardo Garcia for Complex Wadex going through their 50 synchro burpees. Ospina is in the water, and he's now making the turn on the left side of your screen. He is ahead of Tony Facchini from Conquer Athlete. Top two teams, Complex Wadex and Conquer Athlete here in the first of two heats for the men in Worms Can't Swim. And more teams starting to send their first man out on the swim. There is Alex Smith. Fourth man into the water, upper right-hand part of your screen, from the Krypton team, along with Austin Spencer and Christoph Horvath. Pretty solid team of individual talent. Alec is obviously podiumed at the games on a team with the Krypton team back in 2019, but multiple qualifications as an individual. Austin Spencer made it to the games as an individual in 2022. And Christoph Horvath, the older brother of Laura Horvath, a, a well-seasoned athlete, someone who's competed at a high level at competitions like Dubai. Elspina for Complex Wadex is 
on the right side of your screen in the lead ahead of Tony Facchini from Conquer Athlete. The first two teams into the water here is just about every team, every team now onto their 50 synchro burpees. So all teams have their first swimmer in the water here. After this, it's 20 worm clean and jerks. It's a good battle developing for third place behind Ospina and Facchini. is about ready to get out of the water as Complex Wadex maintains the lead here into round number two. Complex Wadex is Ospina heads back to join Calvete and Garcia. Now 20 worm clean and jerks for them. Now Tony Facchini for Conquer Athlete emerging from the water. He'll go back to join Tyler Cook and Will Carter for their 20 worm clean and jerks. But what's really important for these athletes when they're getting out of the water is that positive frame of mind. They've got a lot of work to go and if you're getting out of that water feeling defeated, then that's gonna set a tone for your team and you can't do that because they're all looking at you going, how was it? <laughs> right? And I, I imagine for some of these athletes, assuming they follow the strategy and they do put their worst swimmer out, there's got to be a sense of relief getting out of the water and it, for those first few teams being like, okay, I did my job, I got us to that next stage, and we're still in a good position overall. That's exactly right. I mean, that's how momentum builds, right? You want to build momentum off of a positive situation. And so when that swimmer comes back and you're like, ooh, that was our weakest one and he's looking pretty good. Mm -hmm. You know what the good swimmers are thinking? Time to eat. Yep. Lane, number eight, Krypton, they sit in third place. Alex Smith, Austin Spencer, and Christoph Horvath behind Complex Wadex and Conquer Athlete. Wadex on the left side of the screen, no, they were on the left side, and lane number 13, they're now on the far right side. Well, Alex Smith decided to put shoes and socks on here. I like that because, you know, his swim portion is done. For him, the grip, protecting the feet the rest of the way, pretty nice for him because his transition to the water is over. Horvath is in the back. You got Alex Smith in the middle and Austin Spencer there in front for Krypton. I've worked with Alex. Alex is a good swimmer, so it makes me really think about that strategy of sending maybe the weaker off first. If you send the best off first, because they're so confident in the water, their ability to assess the situations of what is really out there has a high level of accuracy. And imagine feeding that information to the other athletes. And that is a benefit. That's what's so beautiful about the team event is that it's not just assembling the greatest and the great. You have to think strategically based upon what you have. The complex Wadex is now done with their set of 20 and Ricardo Garcia is going to make his way into the water. We approach the nine minute mark of the opening heat for the men. That's the team in second place, Conquer Athlete. Tony Facchini in front has already gone out on the swim. Tyler Cook and Will Carter. Now the two men behind him. And that looks like Tyler Cook who's going to be the second man to swim for Conquer Athlete. The top two teams remain the same here in round number two. Complex Wadex and Ricardo Garcia and Tyler Cook for Conquer Athlete. It's Ospina and Calvete on the synchro burpees for Wadex and Fakini and Carter for Conquer Athlete. That's Tyler Cook making his way into the Bayside water just, here. Just a note on the entry, the athletes were brief to wait to dive in until you actually hit the water. A couple of athletes were asking about being able to cast from the middle. The, the ramp does go down another five feet below the water, so for safety reasons, they have to wait until they actually touch the water to dive. Well, Ricardo Garcia is approaching the buoy, but he's on the wrong side. I'll tell you what, you're never really in a great position with the worm, if I do say so myself. 
I was in the, the, the team briefing for the elite females, Sean, and all I heard was that they have to get out to the pink buoy and go around it. That was it. It was fairly, fairly straightforward, a single buoy. The only time you get DQ'd if you touch one of those life's, uh, one of those <laughs> lifeguard rafts that they have in kayaks. We got a game of chicken going on here between so, Garcia and Cook. So they find a way to navigate around each other. I mean, I think that rule is actually kind of nice. I mean, it's not like there's a massive number of people. I did a, an Ironman in Brazil and we swam 1.2 miles offshore and we had to go around a boat. Well, I was in front, and the swimmers that are off track, I was running into them, and they're like, oh, I must have hit the turnaround, and they just flip turned and went into shore because there were so many of them. I mean, a 1,000 people, how are you going to be able to manage this? Let's face it, the rules are pretty straightforward if all you have to do is go around that pink buoy. Calvete and Aspina on the right side of your screen for Complex Wadex are awaiting the return of Ricardo Garcia, who's on the left side. And he's just about back to the Bayside stage here as we approach the halfway point of this event. 24-minute time cap, opening heat. First of two heats here in Worms Can't Swim. It's the second event of the day for the elite teams. They'll have one more tonight over at Flagler and then three more tomorrow to close out the competition. And that's going to be a nice break for Complex Wadex. They got their 50 done. Still a decent amount of swimming left for their athlete out, on, out in the water. After just ripping off 50 burpees, having a little bit of a break to compose yourself is going to be nice. You know, that's interesting watching what they're doing during, like, having a break. Like, what do you do when you get a little bit of time? And this is becoming more of a science because as we're seeing within the CrossFit workouts, intervals are now becoming part of the sport. So if you get one minute of rest, then the question is, is what is the optimal way to put you in the best position for the next interval? And that's what these guys, if they're on their game, should be thinking about. Ricardo Garcia is back with Ospina and Calvete. They have 10 worm clean and jerks. It's going to be Mauro Calvete, who is in the back, who will be the last swimmer for Complex Wadex. And here comes Tyler Cook for Conquer Athlete. And the intervals aspect is a fascinating thing because for the team competition, that was a big part of it in the early days. Pre-2016, not every team had to compete every event. So there was always, and they didn't always have to work together in synchro, so there was a lot of interval work pretty much baked into it. And that's starting to change a little bit, but for the team, individual athletes coming over to the team, they get a little taste of that. Tyler Cook on the left side of your screen, making his way back to Tony Facchini and Will Carter, who are done with their 50 synchro burpees. They'll start on their final set of 10 once Cook gets back. The complex Wadex has a gigantic lead right now. now Max Lift Australia in lane 12, they are sitting in third place. Riley Smith getting out of the water. And now for Complex Wadex, Mauro Calvete is on to the swim as he tries to bring home the heat win for his team. And for the team that's close behind them, he's going to be chased presumably by Will Carter, a well-versed team athlete who's been part of the Move Fast Lift Heavy team that was top five at the games or top ten at the games each of the last two years and finishing fourth this, pa this past season. So Christoph Horvath getting out of the water for the Krypton team. And that's Complex Wadex. Esteban Espina and Ricardo Garcia. 50 synchro burpees. As Spencer and Smith are still working on their 50 synchro burpees as Horvath puts his shoes back on. Might as well make use of that time. Yeah, if the team's not done, Take care of your transition work in between. Get those shoes on. Be ready to go. But that's planning, isn't it? Like, if he wasn't thinking in advance, the shoes wouldn't even be on the pool deck. And that's what he's really, like, maybe I'll have enough time. But if they're not there, then that's the problem. And this is where the sport has evolved, is that these teams recognize the strategy matters. I mean, we've seen a bunch of super teams come into, into CrossFit, and they have it underperformed. What Rich Froning has proved is that the team must be a unit, but you also must have good strategy. And there's little things that go overlooked, too. I remember talking to Chase Ingram when he was working with uh, his team about spending a bunch of time on just getting in and out of a rower efficiently. Stuff like that makes a gigantic difference. Yeah, right. You see people trying to get on the rower the same side that the person's getting off of the rower. 
you're right. And, and the sport is continuing to evolve where we're going to see performance improvements because people are smarter. I also think that's what's interesting about the team of three here at Tier Wadapalooza too, because you do get new combinations. And you get to see how some of these athletes problem solve in real time, despite not having much work working together. Maybe they're just doing it for fun, but how they're able to kind of mix and blend their own personal techniques into this team setting. You know, that what you just said, the fun piece. There's not the level of stress here that there is remotely the same at the CrossFit Games. I mean, even when they mess up, they're laughing about it. But that is how you learn. But if you don't go out there and put it on the line, then you're always going to show up on game day of making mistakes. I always tell athletes, it's like, you know, the athletes that I work with, it's like, I'm sorry, I'm going to enter you in a master swim meet and you're going to do every single event. And they're like, I'm going to bomb everything. And I'm all, <laughs> That's how you I learn. Don't, right. I don't I just want you not to false start. Mm -hmm. Right. Here comes Mario Calvete for Complex Wadex. And once he gets back to the worm, he and Ospina and Garcia will have five clean and jerks remaining as they look to bring home the heat win here. As we approach the 17 minute mark. Here comes Calvete. I think these athletes getting out of the water just finished up round number two. Yeah, they've almost lapped the most of the field. Five remaining reps here for Wadex. Conquer athletes, Will Carter is in the middle of your screen. They sit in second place. Now here's the final rep for Complex Wadex looking to bring home the Heat win, and they are done. 17, 15.6 seconds for Complex Wadex. Now Will Carter trying to lock up a second place finish here in this heat for Conquer Athlete. What a dominant performance here in this heat from Complex Wadex. You see Fakini and Cook on the left side of your screen. They're now done with their 50 synchro burpees. Will Carter slipping a little bit as he makes his way out of the water and up that ramp. Six minutes to go before we hit the time cap. Carter with some urgency now back to the worm. They're going to get right to it. Five remaining reps for Fakini, Cook, and Carter. Looking for the second place finish here in this heat. 17, 15.60 seconds, the top time. This will be the final rep for Conquer Athlete. And the clock stops when, they that are worm, done. when that worm gets to the other shoulder. Important aspect to note about timing. That leaves Max Lift Australia in lane 12 as your leaders on the floor. Riley Smith and Riley Martin going through the synchro burpees. James Thomas <laughs> is the man who's waiting for them to get done. And that's the danger of maybe having your best swimmer last, being able to rip through that swim while the rest of your teammates are getting increasingly tired and having to do these burpees under more fatigue. That sink of making sure you guys time it well becomes a little bit more difficult. Plus, there's a bunch of events left, and the last thing that you want is one of your teammates to be bummed that they let the other team down. You know, when they were doing these, a lot of these run events back at the games, they would put your, everybody has to hold the rope, and all they're doing is just dragging the slowest, and it's gonna bum that person out, but you got a lot more work to do. So you wanna make sure that people leave this fired up. Max Lift Australia on their final two reps, James Thomas, Riley Smith, and Riley Martin. And they are in, and then in lane 10, right side of your screen, that's the Midwest Cowboys. Matt Pratt, DJ Kessler, and Briley Smith. As Max Lith Australia is done. Approaching the 20 minute mark, four minutes left before we get the time cap. Opening heat for the men on this first day of competition for the elite teams. Now no rep there in lane number 15 for Project Girona. 
are trying to get themselves sorted out. Middle athletes starting to get a little bit out of sync in the transition over to the other side. That's Zebi Serra, Francesco Martinez, Alcina, and Jorge Rower. They are now done, and now down in lane five, that's Kinesis Black, Ben Simons, Isaiah Weber, and Jonathan Ellingson. For this first day of team competition, I realize it's only two days, but the first two tests so far, you think of time domains, you've had two 20-ish minute e efforts for these teams, a pretty stout way for, for them to kick things off. Now, Krypton and the Midwest Cowboys are gonna be the next ones to finish as Krypton's done, and now the Midwest Cowboys have two reps remaining. And that's multiple no reps on these final few worm clean and jerks. Looked like they had a decent lead over Krypton. Krypton able to sync up on the final five and sneak ahead of them. It's Bradley Smith in front, Matt Pratt. <laughs> and DJ Kessler, and now they're finished. The two and a half minutes left. Lane seven, that's EFP. Benjamin Sexton, Johnny Charles, and Alexander Majors. And they have two reps left. They still have teams sending their final man out to the swim here. So not everybody's gonna get in inside that 24 minute time cap. Complex Wadex right now, the top time. With one heat remaining, 17 minutes, 15.6 seconds. Now two minutes to go. And there is Fox Ferreted Manatee men, Joey Dennison, Nate Ackerman, and Daniel Coots. And they're finished. Now 90 seconds left. Now, a couple teams that are way towards the back have just decided that they're not going to send their last man out. Just getting some extra rest here. Now, they were briefed that if an athlete gets to the swim but does not complete it, you can still get credit for all the burpees if they continue that. And assuming you're not going to be able to finish the swim in that time, more of a tactical thing knowing that you're not going to get any extra credit for getting a certain portion of the swim. Yeah, the Midwest Cowboys are... Still doing their synchro burpees here, going into the final round is Matt Pratt. Just waiting for them. Kessler and Smith for the Midwest Cowboys working on 50 synchro burpees and inside a minute to go here. Now 40 seconds left. That's rehab to perform in lane 14, going to their final set of synchro burpees. And now they have 30 seconds remaining. Felix Antoine LeMay, who's down there in the squat, trying to see if their third team member is anywhere close to getting back here so they can accumulate as many reps as they can in those final five worm cleaning jerks. Still some athletes who are trying to get their, their team in a decent position here, get themselves out of the water. I believe that's Simon Pierre for rehab to perform, and that's going to do it. But Complex Wadex is going to hold the top time heading into the second and final heat. 17 minutes, 15.6 seconds. And they were out front early with Conquer Athlete, and then they opened up a gigantic lead in the middle part. And we saw a nice little effort towards the cap there with a few of the remaining teams trying to get up on top of the ramp to get credit for that full swim just before the time cap. But right. Like we were saying earlier, everybody's saying this is for fun. But look at the intention. They're taking it serious. They're trying. They're well, Complex Wadex certainly took this seriously as they just dominated this opening heat. Yeah, and a team from Latin America, a couple athletes from Mexico, I believe one from Argentina. Strong performance, pretty much wire to wire from the first swimmer. You know, they don't have a ton, their individual athletes don't have a ton of high level experience at maybe semifinals or even games. But sometimes the, some of its parts, it's greater than the whole, but or vice versa, depending on how you look at it. But that was a tremendous performance from them. And they really didn't get much of a challenge once they were into that second round of the swim. 
which is so great about this sport. If you can establish your dominance like they did early, then the team that is sitting there behind them is not going to go after them. What they're going to do is self-preservation. They're going to be thinking about, you know what, second's good for now. And that's what's beautiful is that you're thinking about the one in front, but you're also concerned about the one back because we're talking points. Unofficial results from heat number one, Complex Wadex, the only team to go sub-18. 17 minutes, 15.60 seconds. Max Lift Australia, they are able to edge out Conquer Athlete by just three-tenths of a second. Project Girona from Spain, they finish in fourth. And Krypton rounding out the top five. So one heat down, one heat remains. Chris, if you're coaching one of these teams in the second heat, after watching that first heat, what advice do you give them? You have to realize this is a long time domain like you guys mentioned earlier. And a lot of people sit there and it's like, well, it's a short swim relatively, but it's like, wait a minute, I've got about 17 minutes of time under tension. So what is a speed if you have to do 17 minutes? And you've gotta be careful. Worms Can't Swim is event number two of six for the elite teams. and. A lot of worm clean and jerks, 60 total, and a lot of synchro burpees. Strategy matters. Absolutely. You're, they're going to work together on the worm and then separate with one athlete on the swim while the rest are doing synchro burpees, but they're going to finish with one final set of five. Keys to success here. Well, worst first, get your worst swimmer out there early in the workout before fatigue starts to pile up and, you know, the the nervousness that Chris talked about in the previous heat in the water starts to compound. And it does pay to be a swimmer if you have some guys that are confident in the water. It allows you to be more aggressive than some of the other implements on the worm and burpees. And do a better job on your assessment and give that feedback to your teammates, which is an advantage. 15 teams out here on Bayside stage and two teams we'll be keeping an eye on will be right next to each other in lanes 10 and 11. In lanes 10, a team that had two men compete as individuals the strappy young lads is James Sprague, Jack Farlow, and Benoit Boulanger. And then in lane 11, Cross It Mayhem, The Empire, Samuel Demeser, Angelo DeChico, and Royce Dunn. And if it pays to be a swimmer, well, then it's nice to have James Sprague on your team because yesterday in the individual competition, he set the Bayside crowd on fire when he reeled in Brent Fikowski on the final swim and then brought it home with a little home run celebration on the air runner. I mean, that was an awesome performance. Awesome. Because Brent Fikowski is a swimmer. He knows his way around the swimming pool. Well, he's not only is he a great swimmer, he's great at strategy. And to see someone outplay him there at the end is very rare. Yes. But imagine that information now that he's on a team. That's good insight. Three, two, one. Second and final heats underway. We start with a 30 worm clean and jerks. 17 minutes, 15.6 seconds from Complex Wadex. And heat number one is your time to beat. And your fan pick on the Heat One app, the strapping young lads. James Sprague, Jack Farlow. He thinks the fans. Boulanger. He thinks the fans watched the individual competition yesterday and maybe rolled that bet over. What an awesome venue! I mean, this is just—it's—it's it's so awesome that Guadalupe just to lean. They need more space for the fans. They change the bleachers around. It's like let's just pull in a barge. And they didn't just pull it in. They dragged it in from Chesapeake, Virginia. <laughs> They basically had to drag it down the eastern seaboard to get it here. And then you see those two massive poles, those big iron poles behind the truss. Those are what are stabilizing this thing in the water to make it a viable platform. And the cutout of the barge is almost identical to the Bayside stage in previous years. So they pretty much replicated it on water and it's made for an awesome setup. I mean, yeah. Sorry, Chris, in lane six, that's the the trio of Justin Medeiros, Willie George, and Jay Crouch. Let's send it down to Brian Friend. Thanks, Sean. I had a friend back in the warm-up area. He said that this team was the only team doing touch-and-go reps with the worm, and sure enough, sets of five out the gate here. We'll see how it pays off in the long run. First time we've seen that here from any team in this event. 
as Medeiros, George, and Jay Crouch. Team GoWad, two of those athletes, Jay and Willie, were part of the GoWad team last year that finished as the runner-ups at Tier Wadapalooza. They swapped out Roman Krennikov for Justin Medeiros, but Jay Crouch, really the only athlete on that trio that has high level experience on a team at the games. Remember, he was part of the Reebok CrossFit Frankston team way back in the day out of the Pacific region. That's CrossFit Mayhem, the Empire, Samuel Demeester, Angelo DiCicco, and Royce Dunn. The worm's going to be traveling a long way off the floor with those athletes. Yeah, but they're going to have some really good experience, particularly when fatigue starts to set in, because all three of these athletes have competed on a team at the games under that Mayhem banner. Royce obviously working with the Torian Black team out of Australia. Jay Crouch, Willie George, and Justin Medeiros working through their 30 reps, continuing to go with sets of touch and go. This is Medeiros' first time here at Chirwata Palooza since 2019 when he finished 17th overall in the elite division. Two spots ahead of the current fittest man on earth, Jeff Adler. Nice little throwback there. I love that Justin's out here doing this on a team. I mean, he's got to work new elements. He's got to work that worm, and that is important, right? He's under the lights. He's thinking about what he did at the games last year, and he's rebuilding, and he's going to go back and try and win the CrossFit Games. You saw Jorge Fernandez working his way into the water. He's on the right side of your screen in the front, first man in. He's with Roman Krenikov and Saxon Panchik. And Justin Medeiros has got some, a lot of tape there on that left foot as he is into the water. And no swim pack on the mullet. Don't want to cover that thing up. No, even even when it gets soaked with water, that only adds to the allure. There's some talented swimmers entering the water right now. And, and what I love is that they're actually sending, which we thought would be the slower ones, but they're sending a lot of just the pure talent coming out. And I think that ones like Roman Krenikov, you know what, let's establish dominance now and let other people try and catch up. Looks like an individual heat at the CrossFit Games with Noah, Justin, Roman all out there on that first swim. Jorge Fernandez continues to lead, but not by much. But James Sprague just now getting into the water. We'll see if he'll be able to make up some ground here on the lead pack of four. Jorge, a member of the CrossFit Invictus team that brought home the gold in the Affiliate Cup this past season. I'm not sure who's in second. I think that's Noah Olson in the lead. Yeah. But look at the drafting on the right-hand side. Who's ever back there behind, whether it's Justin. But it's – it's and look at trying to find the spot because it's a good 20% easier drafting somebody. So if you could sit on someone's feet and just coast it in, take advantage. Noah Olson looks to be in the lead for Ombre Hombres. He's out there along with Chandler Smith and Tola Moracano. Justin Madera sits in third place. He's in the middle of your street. I think that's Jorge Fernandez on the right in second. And we've seen a few athletes, especially in the individual divisions, take some interesting lines towards that buoy. And you fastest fastest point between two lines is or between two points is a straight line. So that's right. Well, it's it's interesting to me when I watch these swimmers and when they're doing their sighting. A good swimmer, what they will do is they will actually sight right when the hand just reaches about three inches under the water. They'll pop their eyes up, not even let their nose, the bottom of the nose, out of the water. They'll look, head back down, and then breathe. And they will do it on every stroke when the water is calm, and it doesn't slow them, it doesn't sink the hips. And that's not happening here. Here comes Justin Medeiros. He's got that tape on the left ankle. For more on that, here's Brian Friend. Yeah, out at event one this morning, talking with several of the athletes. There were anchor rolls of various degrees, Justin Medeiros clearly being one of those. So hopefully it's okay for him. Taped up and he's giving it a go, which you, of course, love to see. There's Noah Olsen, who is out of the water first to the Ombre Hombres. They're in lane number nine. He was followed by Justin Medeiros and Jorge Fernandez. As Medeiros is waiting for Willie George and Jay Crouch to finish up those 50 synchro burpees, and then they will get to work on their 20 worm clean and jerks. Interesting that Medeiros has a belt. He's one of the only athletes we've seen actually use the weightlifting belt for these worm clean and jerks. You know, part of the, I guess, the negative of putting that worm to the ground if you're going to do touch and go reps puts a lot of stress on the lower back. Because actually, Roman has one too, but you're in a very awkward angle when you do that. There's Noah Olson's team, the Ombre Hombres. 
it's a very tra difficult transition whether you're you're coming out of the water and then you're doing these the worm or you're going from the worm and then exit in i mean entering into the water because these are contrasting movements at the crossfit games a couple of years ago when they were out in california what we saw were movements that were very similar right it was ghc sit-ups it was slam balls basically hinging which is what swimming is but if you're doing something like this, there is a period of transition, and these athletes and what you saw from Justin, there was a level of patience before he started because the body has to do that transition. Triathletes, when they swim, all the blood's in the arms. When they go to stand to exit the water, it's got to transition to the legs. And Justin's smart. He's one of the students of the game, and that's what you saw. People were like, hurry, 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 but it's like, that's what he was doing. Top teams on the screen right now, far left side is Team Pixel, Roman Krennikov, Saxon, Panchik, and Jorge Fernandez. Trying to hold off Team Gowad and the team on the right side, the Hombres Hombres. And you can get a little preview of the team competition next season as Tola Maracanio and Noah Olsen will be on a team for the CrossFit game season. And of course, Noah and Chandler are part of the boys squad at Wadapalooza that won two seasons ago and finished third last season. They swapped Travis Mayer out, who's on a different team, ultimately to give Tola and Noah some familiarity competing together. And Travis Mayer's right there in lane seven with Bjorven Carl Gumanson and Pat Vellner. Vellner was the first swimmer for the Trace Leches team. Which is nice to see. Vellner out there in the water. I like that a lot. Gowad still still sticking to the touch and go reps. Tola Marocchio and Roman Krennikov and Willie George will be on the second leg for their respective teams. Krennikov making the turn followed closely by George. And here comes Tola Marocchio. Third. The ombre ombres. We saw a few of the athletes have to go touch the chess piece. That, that's a required aspect of this event because the worms are staggered. They want to make sure that all the athletes cover the same distance coming in from the run and out to the swim. Well, Moroccan, you decided to kind of scoot his way into the water. He's still ahead of Krennikov, and now Willie George is going to be in third. Tola implementing the playground slide technique for the water entry. There's the Ombre Hombres, Team Pixel and Team Gowad, your top three here in the second and final heat for the men. The time to beat belongs to Complex Wadex. They put up a mark of 17 minutes, 15.6 seconds in heat number one. And Chris, it looks like it looks like Willie's maybe struggling a little bit in the water. I think that's Willie. His head popped up a few times. It looks like he's messing with his goggles. What's going through your mind at that point if, if, if even your equipment isn't quite right? This is where training comes into effect, that what you need to really do is practice that in the pool. So if the goggles don't actually function, then what are you going to do? And if you don't have a backup plan in a competition like this, what's going to happen is, is that you're going to end up going off course. Willie George, if it is a malfunction within his goggles and they're filling up with water, he needs to take those goggles off and just stuff them in the suit and make do. The top three teams are way ahead of the rest of the field here. It's on the left side of your screen, Noah Olson and Chandler Smith are working away at that second set of 50 synchro burpees. Tola Maracanio still in the lead ahead of Roman Krennikov. Willie George now rounding the buoy, but starting to lose ground here. But he's losing ground to two extremely gifted swimmers. And so Willie George knows this. And so it's, 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 a, it's a giveaway that you're willing to already let them have. And it's not a bad thing from his side. If he's actually in control right now and being patient and just letting them go versus unwillingly letting them go, it's a whole different thing. They're swimming fast. I mean, Roman's getting dropped. Willie George has fallen way behind. Krennikov and Moroccanio, but Jay Crouch is going to swim the anchor leg for that GoWat team. So That's going to be so exciting. <laughs> Typically having an Australian as your anchor leg for the swim is, is good, but Jay is actually 
been up and down with some of the swim events historically in his, in his individual career. Have an Australian on your team and you're going in the water, you're going to have a good time. <laughs> Barakanyo is out, Krennikov is out. And both the Omre Hombres and Team Pixel have finished their synchro burpees in Medeiros and Crouch are now done with theirs. Now 10 worm clean and jerks before the final swim. And we got a tight battle for first place between Pixel, the team of Roman Krennikov, Saxon Panjic, and Jorge Fernandez, and the Omre Hombres with Team Gowad lurking in third. Willie Jarge just got out of the water, should be coming in towards the rest of his team. So losing about three to four reps on the worm clean and jerk so far. Team Pixel about a rep ahead of the team on your screen now. The Ombre Hombres. As Chandler Smith is going to swim the anchor leg for his team. It'll be Panchik, the last man out for Team Pixel. And now the Ombres with five. It's, they're not on your screen now, but Gowad still sticking with those touch and go worm clean and jerk reps. They just set it down with, for the first time. Well, you can see the Hombres taking a look down to see what Pixel's doing. And Pixel's on their final rep here on the set of 10. Now Saxon Panchik. He's going to make his way to the water as Pixel's back in the lead. The Hombres are done, and here comes Chandler Smith. Gowad is done too. I think Jay Crouch is just making the transition. So one thing to you know, they made up about two reps on the Hombres there. Just from going from that touch and go technique, if, if, they, if they can stay close, they could clip them on that final five reps. Here goes Saxon Panchik on the final leg for his team, 17.15.6. That's the top time, and here comes Jay Crouch for Team Gowad. And for team Roman Krennikov and Jorge Fernandez on their 50 synchro worm burpees. Next to them, Justin Medeiros and Willie George. You can see. Behind them in lane seven, Pat Vellner and Bjorven Carl Gumensen. The Tres Leches team is Travis Mayer is out on the swim for them. The Tres Leches might be my favorite team name. <laughs> I'm often asked about, you know, what's happening on the floor with the teams. If you're side by side next to a team, are you looking over like, what is the tell? And really what they're listening for is the rate of breathing. Are they really in control? Or are they in trouble? Meaning, are they hyperventilating? And as soon as they hear the slightest bit of hyperventilation, they know. And that's the level of experiences that these athletes all have is that they're constantly monitoring and evaluating, but what they're watching for is a real tell. Saxon Panchik has made the turn. Jay Crouch now just getting to the buoy and Chandler Smith is behind him in third. Saxon Panchik doing a great job here on the third and final swim as Team Pixel looks to bring home an event win here. We're now two minutes away from complex Wadex time of 17.15.6 seconds. It looks like Panchik's going to be a little too far to reel in, but it looks like Jake, at least Jake Crouch was able to make up a spot on the swim. Passing Chandler to that first buoy. Panchi taking a look over his left shoulder to see where Jay Crouch is. Pixel's just about done with their synchro burpees. Krennikov and Fernandez. Judge's hand has not gone in the air yet for Pixel. Gumason heading out for Trey Leches from lane number seven. Well, and Noah Olson going through their 50 synchro burpees. You saw Moroccan kind of crane his neck to see if he could see where Chandler was. There's Willie George and Justin Medeiros. Now Pixel is working on their final clean and jerks. 
Here comes Jay Crouch, left side of your screen. And for Pixel, they got out of the water around 6'11", 6'10". The previous time to beat, they got out of the water at 16.35. So even though it could be close, the tiebreaker. And that's it. Wow. Pixel smashing wow. this event. 16.50.92, that's 100 points. An event win for Roman Krennikov, Saxon Panchkin, and Jorge Fernandez. That's awesome. Good for them. Uh, awesome. It's going to be close for seconds. Complex Waddick's time is now passed. Third place up for grabs here for Gowad. And now they're done. 17.22.89 seconds for Jay Crouch, Willie George, and Justin Medeiros. And now the Ombre Ombres are done. They'll take third in the heat. Should be good for fourth in the event unofficially. Strong performance from some of the leading teams, but com Complex Wadex from that first heat, their time held on for a top three time, finishing second just behind a very, very talented Team Pixel squad where all three members of their team are strong swimmers. That's Team Tier in lane eight. Just saw them, Dallin Pepper, Jason Hopper, and Ricky Garrard, and then lane 14, that's Pixel Train Cult, Agnola Kai, Fabian Benito Celis, and Guillaume Brion. One of, one of a slew of Train Cult teams here. Three Train Cult teams finished in the top four overall in the qualifiers coming in. Team Tier is onto their final rep as it's Pixel Train Cult beating them across the finish. Like you said, Tommy, I mean, they've had, this is the second of, of two long events for the day. They're not only good swimmers, these, these top teams that finished, but they also have this incredible ability to endure. And that's important because if I was going to bet on a team for tomorrow, it's the one with the best endurance because those are the ones that are best in recovery. They're gonna be in a better position tomorrow because of their ability to endure. Some of the individual athletes that are competing here too, like Roman, they've, they've done a workout with swimming on this barge on back-to-back -back days. Two, or basically three long efforts in two days, including two swims. How about this, Trace Leches? Still on the floor working away. Bjorn Carl Gubinson, Pat Vellner, and Travis Mayer. Plenty of time to get in on the time cap. Is a photo opportunity for Team Pixel, the team that's going to win this event with a time of 16 minutes, 50 seconds. They'll pick up 100 points. And Trace Leches is in. A whole lot of fitness out on that barge right a now. A lot of fitness on that barge. That's one of the great things. Brian and I were talking about this earlier about Cheer Water Palooza, that teams of three has always kind of been the hallmark of this competition. But when they separated it from the individual competition and allowed the individuals a chance to compete as teams, just a great move by them. Super innovative, right? I mean, this that's what's nice about this. It's a festival. And if you ever want to meet any of these athletes, this is your single opportunity because you know what? They're out there in the food village, the courts. They're out there with the meet and greets. They are mingling and there is zero stress. So you can literally grab any of your favorite athletes here. And that's what makes it special. The organizers intended to always be that way. I think you always have the greatest, the best analogy. It's like an all-star weekend here. No <laughs> doubt. And even before they made the adjustment on the schedule, a lot of the top athletes would opt to do the team of three competition instead. Just because it was a unique competition opportunity, a little bit different what they're used to. They could pair up with some of their friends, pair up with uh, underneath the banner some of their their partnerships and sponsorships, and be able to go out and have a good time without the stress like Chris was saying earlier. Still four teams out there working. As we have less than three minutes to go before we hit the time cap. Let's bring in Brian Friend, who's out there on Bayside stage. Yeah, last swimmer out of the water is Mikko Liljeorg. I actually saw him do a swimming event in Finland. He's probably one of the best swimmers in the field. Obviously, his team was towards the back of the pack, but he swam that as fast as anyone. Dude knows how to wear a swimsuit, the proper swimsuit, too. <laughs> Respect. 
It is incredible too when you think back to where we were ten years ago with CrossFit <laughs> athletes swimming. I mean, it looked like it looked like Caddy Day at Bushwood Country Club. Just a lot of thrashing around and chaos. <laughs> well, and they're wearing board shorts that are just filling up with pockets yeah, of water. Yeah, it's just like, what's happening? Come a long way since those days. I mean, man, you throw you throw on a suit like that, that dude's ready to play. I bet he shaved <laughs> down this morning too. <laughs> Aerodynamic, or sorry, aquadynamic. <laughs> Two minutes ago, here in event number two, Worms can't swim. And in lane 13, that's true coach train cult, Amigo Liliorg, who just got out of the water along with Kevin Jurz and Bartek Lipka. Come on, crowd, don't make it work in silence. Let's hear it for police train cult on one. Just one more run for these gentlemen, and they will finish. After 12 years of celebrating fitness, the Tier Wadapalooza is heading to SoCal. Huntington Beach will be the setting for our second flagship event this September. Miami and SoCal. Tier Wadapalooza is now bi coastal. You can scan the QR code to learn more. I can't wait for that event. I mean, the organizers of Guadalupe, they just know how to do it right. I mean, the structure of this workout, if you think about it, the complexity, how are they possibly timing those burpees and the swim to make it work so they're not just all sitting around? I mean, the amount of effort it takes in programming, just one workout for the men. Teams, this is incredible. I mean, but that's the effort they put. All the teams are able to get inside that 24-minute time cap here in heat number two. But as Team Pixel 1650, they're going to pick up the event win. And we had a pretty good battle early on between Pixel, Gowad, the Ombre Ombres. But even though, you know, you saw Gowad going touch and go and maybe making a push here and there on the swim, Pixel was pretty steady throughout. They came in from the second swim in second overall. But the final leg of Saxon Panchik getting the, the baton from Roman Krenikov was just enough for them to overtake the top spot and they were racing against a really strong time from complex wadex in the first heat but maybe about 20 seconds ahead and gives them the win to start the competition on bayside unofficial event results team pixel 16 15.92 the only team sub 17 complex wadex they were the only team sub 18 in heat number one that'll be good enough for second place for them team go -Wad. Outduels the Ombre Hombres for third, and it's team tier in fifth. 18 minutes, 18.52 seconds. Let's go down to Brian Friend with Team Pixel. Thank you, Sean. Here at the winners of event number two, Team Pixel. Saxon, you've been competing out here for a long time and on the Bayfront stage, but never on the barge. How is this experience different? It's incredible. Um, I didn't know how, if we did heavy deadlifts on here, if it was going to shake a little bit, uh, but no, it's awesome. And Jorge, obviously, coming off the team championship at the games this year. You have a ton of experience with the worm. How much did you coach up Roman on how to use that thing? Yeah. <laughs> uh, honestly, it's been great. The last couple weeks, I've been getting my butt kicked individual with him in the gym. Uh, so it's kind of good to feel comfortable for once. Coach him up, and he's like a soldier. He'll listen. He'll do anything. So it's great. Roman, is it fun to compete on the team a little less stress than individual? No, it's always stress for me. It's not for fun. We're here for a win, no for fun. Well, you heard it there. They got a win today. We'll see what they can do tonight on Flagler. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Russians don't have fun. <laughs> Russians are here to win. <laughs> They're here to win. Oh. Here are your unofficial standings after two. Team Go on and Team Pixel. We got a tie amongst the men as well. 192 total points. Team Tier just 12 points back. The Ombre Hombres, they sit in fourth with 172 points. And that the strapping young lads right now in fifth. Again, unofficial standings heading into the third and final event of the day. Chris, thanks so much for coming by, man. Always a pleasure to have you in the booth and enjoy the insight. And have a great time here the rest of your stay in Miami. Thanks, guys. No, always appreciate it. The two events down, one remain here. Stay with us as we are not done in Miami, Florida, as our coverage of Tierwater Palooza continues.
What does it mean when people say America is a land of opportunity? It means the power to discover. To redefine yourself. To improve yourself. To challenge yourself. To realize there's more in you than you ever knew that you could do. It means giving people an open field to explore what they do best. With the best tools. The best training. The best technology in the world. We bring out the best in the people who serve. So you can be all you can be. It's okay to want to be strong. It's okay to want to have it all. Recover faster, go further. Dimatize ISO 100. Because settling is unsettling. Stretch, squat, stroke, stride, swing, spin. That's movement, and this is you. And because you were made to move, we want to move with you. Whether you compete for a living or train for life, we've developed a cutting-edge movement experience that's unlike anything else. Because we, like you, are constantly evolving. Our reconstructed platform features daily mobility paths that can be tailored to fit your lifestyle and athletic goals at a time, space, and pace that works for you. We'll build your foundation in here so you can perform out there, work harder, perform longer, and recover faster. Pliability. What's your path?
What does it mean when people say America is a land of opportunity? It means the power to discover. To redefine yourself. To improve yourself. To challenge yourself. To realize there's more in you than you ever knew that you could do. It means giving people an open field to explore what they do best. With the best tools. The best training. The best technology in the world. We bring out the best in the people who serve. So you can be all you can be. I'm obsessed with squeezing a little bit more out of me. I'm obsessed with taking really good care of me. I'm obsessed with wanting to be the best. There are a lot of potential paths to greatness. It starts with the hard work. A relentless commitment to self-awareness. An obsession with forward progress. Anyone has what it takes to be the best. Only the best. Obsess. Stretch, squat, stroke, stride, swing, spin. That's movement, and this is you. And because you were made to move, we want to move with you. Whether you compete for a living or train for life, we've developed a cutting-edge movement experience that's unlike anything else. Because we, like you, are constantly evolving. 
Our reconstructed platform features daily mobility paths that can be tailored to fit your lifestyle and athletic goals at a time, space, and pace that works for you. We'll build your foundation in here so you can perform out there. Work harder, perform longer, and recover faster. Pliability. What's your path? Saturday night at Tier 1 of Palooza, and we have moved under the lights at Flagler. Thanks for being with us, everybody. I'm Sean Woodland alongside Brian Friend and Lauren Khalil is out there at Flagler stage. As action continues here on day number three of Tier 1 of Palooza at Bayfront Park. Event number three for the elite teams, uno, dos, tres. Check my Spanish dictionary like Tommy did last night. One, two, three, and that'll be the order of operations. One athlete will be working in the first part, two synchronized in the second part, and three on 120 synchro barbell reps at the last part of this workout. It's a lot of work. It's a lot different than what we've seen already. Two monostructural implements. This one requires barbells and gymnastics. A lot of moving parts in this, and we'll be sure to take you through it as we work our way through the event, but keys to success here. Know your roles. There is an opportunity to capitalize on strengths and weaknesses, whether it's with the handstand walking movements or with the weights on the barbells and the different kind of uh, implements that they have there and cycle for the win. I think this one's going to come down to the ability to do those 120 synchro barbell reps together at the end. Athletes in the first of two heats for the elite women are taking their starting positions as we take a look at the lane assignments for this first of two heats. The Kolesnikov team, they're going to be out there in lane number four. And they come in 10th place overall. 
Yeah, pretty steady so far, 11th and 9th. This is the second time for the ladies from uh, Kinesh Kesh Keshnia, excuse me, and Aisha competing together. They've added in Camila Takayeva, a lot of experience on teams for the two of them. And that teamwork could play off big tonight. We're underway. They should be in lane number seven as they have compacted the heat into the middle of the floor. First part of the event here. 20 wall walks, however you want to divi divide them up. But in order to work, someone's got to be holding a handstand. Yeah, and if you're not great at the dynamic gymnastics, you could still contribute to the team a lot by just doing that handstand hold. For those who have done this baseline move in the gym, a handstand hold over a long period of time is can be quite taxing, though, so I expect the athletes to make quick changes here. Teams working through those first 20 reps. They can switch out whenever they want. They got to complete 20 total wall walks. After that, they need to complete 40 strict handstand push-ups. Same rules apply. One person working, two people resting. One, pardon me, one person in the handstand. Yeah, a lot of action going on on the floor in the team competition, but it does seem like most of the teams are making switches maybe every five wall walks or so to make, or so to make sure that the shoulders don't get too fatigued too early. 17 minute time cap. Final event of the day for the elite women. Six total, have three more on Sunday to close out Tier Wadapalooza. Yeah, I mentioned in the run up, they went off course this morning for a run. They had some worm work and a swim this afternoon on Bayside on the barge. And a lot of monostructural work already. I spoke with some of these athletes in the warm-up area, and many of them are very excited to get their hands on the barbell. We talked about those warm weights, but they were getting wet throughout the day. That was an uncomfortable thing for a lot of them. This is very familiar. U.S. Army Warrior Fitness Team, that is Sidney Moskowitz, who is on to the handstand push-up portion of this event. 40 reps they need to accumulate. Yeah, those first 40 are strict. Then they have 60 kipping, so it's 120 total reps with the gymnastics, which will be paralleled by the 120 barbell reps that we've been alluding to at the end. Fire Barnes Club, the team in the middle of your screen now, they're in lane 15. Rosalie Belanger, Jessica Nadeau, and Fanny Girard. They are on the strict handstand push-up portion of this event. And this After this, it's 60 regular handstand push-ups you can kip up. And I think the strict handstand push-ups is that one thing where if you have an athlete who's not particularly good at it, they may not need to do many of those. And two can get to 40. These athletes are very good at that. And then they, most of the athletes, if they're not good at strict, will still be able to contribute on the kipping element that comes up next. Cool to see some of the communication tactics there, a little leg tap indicating you can kick down, knowing that the switch is gonna be happening. Just saw NGH, the team that comes in, tied for first place. Yeah, and it'll be exciting to see how they do here. Great on the run, they were, two of their three athletes were really good in the water, they worked well on the worm but a totally different test this evening and a good opportunity for us as we continue to, you know, they come from all over the world. And we'll see how they mesh together on a workout that requires a lot of strategy and communication. This is Torian Black in lane 10, Christy Hollard, Brianni Chalice, and Amy Alessi. Hollard and Chalice competed the last few days in the individual, Alessi joining them here. They all come from down under and train and Torian together, so I expect that they'll have had a lot of opportunity to make a plan for a workout like this. Just about every team now on to the final portion of this part of the event. That's 60 kipping handstand push-ups. Yeah, and it's always crazy for me when I watch the elite athletes do kipping handstand push-ups. Some of these women and men later on tonight will be able to rip them out really fast, or much more fast than I could ever imagine doing so, and these 60 reps can go by pretty quick. The Kolesnikov team, they're working out of lane number seven. They came in the 10th place overall. Dania Trubitskaya, Kamila Takeeva, and Aizan Zarasova. Well done there, Sean. Watching a lot of hockey pays off sometimes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Limey girls, they're in lane 11. Maddie Harris, Janie Garrett, and Charlotte Davies. 
Yeah, ton of regional and semifinal experience on this team. Seven total appearances, and Janie Garrett uh, making her third straight appearance here at Wadapalooza on the team side of things as well. I think that's Janie on the handstand push-ups right now. Tori and Black, they moved on to the synchro double unders along with the Kolesnikov team. Kolesnikov team, they're the team closest to the camera. And Tori and Black, they're down there in lane number 10 with 200 40 synchronized repetitions they need to complete here. Yeah, and didn't talk too much about this middle portion of the Uno Dos Tres style workout. Obviously, they can face each other for 240 reps. These athletes can do 240 double unders on their own, but they also did that run this morning. It was a trail run. The terrain was a little bit iffy. We saw some athletes with the ankles taped up, and so I think that making smart switches and not letting one athlete do too much of the work here would probably be what most of the teams will go for. The Kolesnikov team. Victorian Black on the left. Top two teams here, and then the Limey girls in lane number 11. They're in the right side of the box on the left side of your screen. Victorian Black is more than halfway through those 240 reps of synchro double unders. Way bottom of the screen there, you see Nicole C Crouch. That is the overall leaders, NGH, that we were referring to. They were about the fifth or sixth team to get to the double unders. They're pretty uh, tall, and so not so surprised to see them a little bit behind the pack on the handstand push-ups. And we'll see if they can close the gap on the double unders before getting to the barbells. NGH making the switch. The trio of Nicole Crouch, Ludwig Valdima's daughter, and Katie Brock, and it's... Brock and Crouch, who are on the double unders right now. Torian Black, meanwhile, is about 70 away from closing out this portion of the event. Then they'll move on to the barbells, where they will have to complete three different synchronized movements at three different weights. Yeah, and that is where a lot of strategy is going to come into play. You see the barbells piled up there. And you may have an athlete who's really good at deadlifting and not so good at front squats, or any combination of the different movements they'll have to do. But you know, 60 straight deadlifts at the heaviest weight is something that I don't think we'll see many doing. So look to see some calculated switches in the first two parts and then probably trying to go for it on that last set of 20 front squats. Well, Trubitskaya and Takaeva for the Kolesnikov team. On the synchronized double under 17 minute time cap here and down down in lane number seven, the Kolesnikov team. They are done and they will move to the barbells. 95, 105 and 115. They're gonna start with 60 synchronized deadlifts. And first team that we get to see kind of disperse those barbells out from the cluster that they had them in. Tori and Black now moving to the barbells as well. Lesnikov team on the left, your leaders right now in this opening heat. 60 synchronized deadlifts. After that, it is 40 synchronized hand cleans. Again, the weight 95, 105, and 115 doesn't sound like that big of a difference, but over 120 reps, I would not want to be stuck on that back barbell for too long. Eight minutes gone by, nine remain here in the first two heats as the elite teams of women close out their first day of competition here. You talk about iconic settings in this sport, and Flagler at night under the Miami lights is certainly one of them. Now, Mile High Muscles, we saw them perform well in the last event they have moved into third place Alicia Shower, Madison McElhaney and Zoe Warren yeah they had a 11th place this morning on the run fifth place in the swim and a lot, a lot of individual experience we talked about earlier but so far they've meshed really well as a team here on day number one seventh place overall after two events the Kolesnikov team is about 20 reps away from wrapping up their synchronized deadlifts. And seem to be making the switch ever 20 reps or so, which makes sense to me, you know, 120 reps. We talked about that last 20, so making sure everyone gets a little bit of a touch on the light bar too. NGH, who came in tied for the overall lead, they are still on their synchro double unders. They are getting left behind here in this opening heat. Yeah, about six teams, seven maybe, have already advanced to the barbell in this heat alone. And having a couple trip ups on the rope, there is a good work. Tori and Black just saw them still continuing to work on the synchro deadlifts as NGH, along with Treta and the Trailer Park girls, are still on the synchro double unders. The Kolesnikov team, 
putting the finishing touches on their set of 60 deadlifts. After this, it's the hand cleans. This is a smart transition. One rep to go, they can deadlift it, then get right to work. Yeah, and it looks like that's probably what they're going to do, just kind of talking about how long of a break they want to go, and then they'll probably go into a set, I don't know, maybe 10 to 15 reps would be expected on this first interval. That's Camila Takaeva who's in front, Trubitskaya's in the middle, and Zarasova in the back. Now 40 reps that need to be synchroed here. And of course, all facing the same direction. So the, you see the front athlete is looking at the judge because the judge is giving a cue that the rep is good, indicating that all three athletes have locked out and met all the points of performance that they've been briefed on. Dorian Black, you saw them taking a break and discussing some things on the right side of your screen. Now they are back to work. They sit in second place, followed by the Mile High Muscles in third. U.S. Army Warrior Fitness Team right now in fourth. A little bit of a miscommunication there on the right, and that certainly can happen. It's only one rep, but 120 reps adds up, and the fewest reps you can do is always going to be an advantage. U.S. Army Warrior Fitness Team, they're in the white tops. Second in from the camera now on the synchro deadlifts. They sit in fifth place right now in the heat. Torian Black, Hollard, Chalice, and Alessi. On the second of three movements here on the barbells, after these 40 hand cleans, it's 20 synchro front squats. You know, 115 pounds is the heaviest bar. It's not a crazy heavy weight. Obviously, you still have to do 120 reps with it, but most of the teams seem to be cycling from once you're on that heavy bar all the way to the front, and everyone moves back one. The Lesnikov team, they continue to lead. They're on the upper left-hand part of your screen. Lane number 10, they're on the lower right. That's Tori in black. Second in from the right towards the bottom. Both teams on their 40 synchro hand cleans. Yeah, the staggered barbells there, of course, for safety reasons. And so this uh, the, the team out of Australia is up in front and don't have the opportunity to see the Kleshnikov team who's off to the right and behind them. Sarasova in front. They're going to make another transition to the Kolesnikov team as we're past the 12-minute mark. Less than five to go before we hit the time cap. Virginia Trubitskaya onto the 115-pound barbell in front. I'm excited for these last 20 front squats. They've had a big day of competition. It started early. They had to get in the water. This is a tough workout with a lot of reps. But you know, just from even training in the gym, you know when you get to that final set, you, you, it's hard to justify an excuse to put it down. So I want to see, see if they fight for all 20 in a row. Top two teams on the screen. Kolesnikov on the left, Torian Black on the right. And Kolesnikov now is done with their final hand clean, and they're going to go right into the front squat. So 20 synchro reps, and then they will close out their event. 10th place overall is the Kolesnikov team with 128 points. They're only 14 points back of the Lifters girls for ninth. Inside four minutes left. The Kolesnikov team about seven or eight reps ahead of Tori and Black at this point as Zarasova dumps the barbell along with Trubitskaya and Takaeva in the back. They have ten reps remaining. Kolesnikov team. So unable to do all 20 in a row. And I mean, it is a lot of reps, but that can be the opportunity. And I think what we can see happen in some of these heats is if you're trailing and you see that window of opportunity, that can be the motivation you need to hold on to it. Yeah, Trubitskaya had to hang out in the bottom there for a little bit to make sure that her team was synchronized. She was the first woman down. The final reps for the Kolesnikov team, and they will take the heat. Excellent there. Like I said, very consistent earlier today. We'll obviously have to see how it stacks up against the final heat. But when you're in heat one, best thing you can do is win your heat, put that score on the board, and they were really good from start to finish there. The time being displayed on screen is not their final time. It's right around 13.59. So 13.59 unofficially for the Kolesnikov team as they take heat number one. And Torian Black, the team in the bottom of your screen, left of center, they have two reps remaining here to close out their event, and they are done. They will take second place in the heat right around 14 minutes, 35 seconds.
Yeah, solid finish to the night for them. And as we said, Howard and Brianna Chalice are both on the third consecutive day of competition. So a well-earned rest tonight. Great way to end it for them with a second place in their heat there. The Mile High Muscles in lane 12. Your leaders on the floor, they're through 14 of their 20 front squats. Again, the time on your screen from the Kolesnikov team, that is incorrect. It is around 13.59, less than two minutes to go before we hit the time gap. Mile High Muscles, Elisa Shower, Madison McElhaney, and Zoe Warren should be the next team across the finish here with one rep remaining, and they are done. You see Madison shaking her head there about something, not sure what's going on, but third place in the heat. They had a fifth place on that swimming workout earlier today. Pretty good showing on day one. Sweet, sticky, thick, and pretty getting ready to finish up along with Lifters girls. And both of those teams are now in. Close finish there. U.S. Army Warrior Fitness Team and the Limey girls, along with NGH, all on their front squats. And NGH has been lurking in that sixth through ninth place throughout this heat after having a great start to the competition with first and fourth. You know, and like we said, those swimming and running workouts can certainly favor a certain style of athlete. Totally different test here, and therefore an opportunity for a lot of other teams to potentially make a move. NGH coming in tied for the overall lead, just trying to do some damage control here on their final reps. They're on the left side of your screen, they now have three remaining. Right side of your screen, the leaping lemurs as NGH is in. Now 20 seconds to go before we hit the cap. And Nicole Crouch giving a little applause for her teammates there as she looks down the floor. A lot of other finishers ahead of them here and some of the best teams from the qualifier will be coming up in the next heat as well. The final seconds. And that is the time cap. The Kolesnikov team, though, unofficially 13.59 to set the mark to beat heading into the second and final heat. Quick race down the floor, heat number two. <laughs> Tenth place overall coming into the event, looking to stay there courtesy of that performance and keep themselves inside the top ten and in the final heat tomorrow. Started out with some inverted gymnastics. You see that tap on the back there indicating the switch. They were really smooth through the gymnastics, got to the rope, tied for first in the heat. Great on the double unders and good communication throughout on the 120 synchro reps with the barbell. Kleshnikov team has a lot of team experience and it clearly paid off for them in this workout that demanded it at all three phases tonight. Once they got to the front squats, they had no problem with that. It only took a couple of breaks. Going sub 14, unofficially 13.59 for the Kolesnikov team. They will get the floor reset for the second and final heat for the elite teams of the women. Heat two, coming up next.
One heat remains for the teams on the women's side of the house at Tier Wadapalooza here in Bayfront Park in Miami, Florida. Glad you're with us, everybody, as we close out the third day of competition here. I'm Sean Woodland alongside Brian Friend. Lauren Khalil is out there at Flagler. It's uno, dos, tres. One working athlete in the first part for the inverted gymnastics, two athletes on the synchronized double unders in the middle of this one, and three athletes synchro for 120 reps on the barbell to close things out on day one of competition. Keys to success here, Brian, after you've watched one heat, does anything change? I don't think so. Know your roles. We saw the teamwork and the chemistry experience pay off for the Kalashnikov team and cycle for the win. Three people doing the same, or three different movements in synchronization for that many reps, critical component of this one at the end. Teams in the second and final heat taking their starting positions as we take a look at the lane assignments here. The second and final heat will be starting in lane number four with the Lycan Gang, the team that comes in in third place overall. Lane number seven plus Ultra, that's the trio of Kyra Milligan, Jesse Smith, and Devin Kim, currently 12th place overall after two events. Yeah, and you talk about a team that has a lot of team experience. All three of those athletes on different teams, but competed at the CrossFit Games this year. Devin Kim there in the background on the championship team with CrossFit Invictus. They actually came through the qualifier, and on the two workouts that had the most gymnastics, barbell cycling, and double unders, they were third and fourth of all the teams that entered into it, the, the qualifier competition. The Heat One app pick from the fans. 10 seconds is Ice Barrel. Yeah, the fans are taking Ice Barrel, and the guys from Heat 1 taking Plus Ultra. We'll, we'll see how it shakes out. Uh, neither of those teams have gotten off to the start that they were maybe hoping for, so definitely looking to close things out with a strong performance tonight. First part of this event starts with the 20 wall walks. One athlete is working, one is holding a handstand, the other is resting. You know, wall walks were introduced to the CrossFit community a few years ago in the open. They become a staple in affiliates all around the world, and you get to see some of the best in the world do them with extreme efficiency and speed here tonight. It yeah, used to be one of those things that you would just sub in for a handstand push up, and all of a sudden it gets thrown out in the open, and now everybody is doing them. Yeah, in the last couple of years, Adrian Bosman has in in input some of these kind of maybe lower skill movements, but we never want to lose the lower skills, and it's a message that he's clearly been sending, and the elite athletes have incorporated it into their training and competition as well. Team Scandinavian is in lane number 10. That's Matilda Garns, Rebecca Vittison, and Annika Greer. Garns and Vittison are the ones taking care of the work right now. Greer is taking a break. Vittison competed as an individual over the last two days. Yeah, fifth place against the elite individual women's field at Wadapalooza is no joke. Ooh, great effort by her, and wait till Annika Greer gets on that strict handstand push-ups. You want to see someone cycle those things fast? She's a good candidate. Plus Ultra, they're down in lane at number seven, Milligan, Smith, and Devin Kim. Yeah, I think we'll see something similar from Kyra Milligan when she gets to the strict handstand push-ups. She can crank out a set of 20 of those in the blink of an eye. 13.59 unofficially, the top time from the Kolesnikov team out of heat number one. And that is Annika, and this is what I was talking about. Uh, she's a super, super fit athlete, but she's pretty short. She doesn't mind talking about that, and her range of motion and upper body strength is phenomenal. The team Ice Barrel in lane 11, Brooke Wells, Bailey Rail, and Paige Powers, your leaders right now. Is there in the second of three movements in this portion of the event, the 40 strict handstand push-ups. And that was a great shot where you could just see the cycle rate of Annika two or three reps sometimes compared to some of the other women. And even though it's only 40 reps, it's a massive advantage to have. Until the guard is gonna take over on the strict handstand push-ups for Team Scandinavians. Two of the top teams in this heat right next to each other, Scandinavian. They're on the left, and Team Ice Barrel in the center of your screen in the white tops. Until the Garnis, two strict handstand push-ups, so I think that Annika did 38 there. <laughs> Scandinavian is on to the 60 handstand push-ups. You can't kip these now. This is a 90s trend team, and they got through their strict handstand push-ups with no problem at all. Scandinavian, they're your leaders right now. Eighth place overall. 
coming into this event with a total of 144 points. They're only eight points out of a spot inside the top five. And Chris, a great example of the know your role keys that we talked about. The wall walks, having nice long wingspan, you can take a few steps and get in and out. The handstand push-ups, Annika taking a brunt of those there, and just, I think this team really playing into each other's strength in the first part of this three-part workout. Just about every team is on for those handstand push-ups. 60 total reps here. The reps will increase on the first part. It's 240 synchro double-unders in the middle, and then the reps descend when we get to the barbells. Looks like plus ultra in lane seven. Stronger than the 90s trend. Kelsey Keel, Emily Lundberg, and Kelly Baker are now moving on to the synchro double unders. That's Kelsey Keel and Kelly Baker. They're the first to start those 240 reps. Ice barrel's about done, as is Scandinavian. Yeah, Kelsey Keel and Kelly Baker, veterans here at Wadapalooza, love competing on this stage. Great chemistry, and we saw the teams that have some team experience really doing well on this in Heat 1, so not too surprising to see them get off to a good start here. Stronger than a 90s trend. They're in fifth place overall, 152 points after the first two events. The top three on the screen. Left side is Scandinavian. In the middle, it's Ice Barrel, and on the right, stronger than a 90s trend. And Team Ice Barrel sitting in 11th overall right now. Definitely not where they want to be. I do think that once we get to the barbell, the fact that these three have the best pedigree of anyone in the field as far as individual games athletes go is really going to start to show. Lundberg and Baker now on the double unders. It's Rail and Wells in the middle of your screen for Ice Barrel. And now Annika Greer swapping in for her team. Uh, lane 13, that's RX performance. They come in tied for the overall lead with NGH. NGH struggled in the last heat. So our RX performance, if they can stay towards the front here, could be all by themselves in the overall lead. But they only had a four-point cushion over the Lycan gang. They're down in lane number three. Lycan gang was the other team in this heat that I had taken note of in terms of their online performances in those same two workouts that Plus Ultra had been fourth and third. They were second and sixth and RX performance, similar to MGH, lurking kind of in the middle of the heat after we saw it dominating performances in the first two events this morning. Stronger than the 90s trend is leading the way right now. Lane four, that's the Lycan gang. Third place overall coming in, only four points back of the overall lead. Had a really strong performance earlier today. Yeah, back-to-back -back third place finishes. They were 32nd last year in the lead division and definitely looking to prove that this 12, lap past 12 months has not gone to waste. They've looked great so far. Bailey Rail and Paige Powers working on their 240 double-unders. Paige Powers didn't compete as an individual this year at Chirwadapalooza, but was your individual champion last year. And kind of just a fun shot that I've seen those two compete across or train together at CrossFit Mayhem. They do that almost every day. And so nice to see them kind of uh, getting a chance to show some of that teamwork and friendship that they have here on the competition floor. Stronger than a 90s trend, Kelsey Keel, Emily Lundberg, and Kelly Baker on to the 60 synchronized deadlifts. Three different weights on the barbells, 95, 105, and 115. And Kelsey Keel barking out the count there at the back. If there was one athlete who I would expect to maybe take a brunt of the heavy barbell weights for her team, Kelsey's probably that athlete. A Scandinavian there onto the barbells, getting things sorted out. They'll start their 60 reps on the deadlifts here. And cutting, getting caught up a little bit in the transition here, as and Team Ice Barrel had no real issues with that just off screen to the right. They got done with the double honors a very similar time, but got to work much sooner. Hilda Garnas is in the front, followed by Annika Greer and Rebecca Vittison. There's the Lycan gang, closest to the camera. Yeah, both the Lycan gang and RX performance are still on those double unders. And this is where I do think that that leaderboard has a chance to really tighten up going into day two. Stronger than the 90s trend now, halfway through this first set of 60 synchronized deadlifts. Team Ice Barrel, they're working on the deadlifts as well. You see Paige Powers and Bailey Rail. And just kind of scanning across the floor, the speed of the reps is kind of dictated by the synchronicity. So I don't think that you can gain too much by having really fast barbell cycling reps. It's the transitions 
and not losing time there. That go, comes back to all that experience that those women have competing here for so long that I think is really going to pay off for them tonight. The Lycan gang, they have now moved on to the barbells as well. Time to beat unofficially 13.59 from the Kolesnikov team in heat number one. Kiel, Lundberg, and Baker making the transition. They are now on the bottom right-hand part of your screen in the middle. That's Ice Barrel. They sit in second place in the Team Scandinavian bottom left. Vinison, Greer, and Garnis. As Ice Barrel looks like they've just about wrapped up their set of deadlifts, and they have taken the lead now from Stronger Than the 90s trend, but they're going to complete one deadlift and get right into their hand clean. So dead even now between Stronger Than the 90s trend and Team Ice Barrel. And Emily Lundberg, the third member of that 90s trend team, she's also out of Sweden. And we talked about the RX Performance team comprised of all Swedes. So a good Swedish representation here in the final women's heat tonight. 40 synchronized hand cleans here. Again, three different weights on the barbells. 95, 105 to 115. Ice Barrel on the left had the lead, but they are resting. That's opened the door for stronger than the 90s trend as now they are tied. Ice Barrel back to work. Yeah, bigger break for Ice Barrel, but not that big of a set for 90s trend. Different strategies. And I think when we get to the front squats, once again, Ice Barrel being in the back there will have a better view of 90s trend and can potentially make that decision of closing uh, with an unbroken set if needed to maybe squeak out a win. Team Ice Barrel is halfway through that set of 40. Team Scandinavian now starting to creep up. And battle stronger than the 90s trend for second place. Lycan Gang closest to the camera, trying to close out their opening set of barbell movements, those 60 synchronized deadlifts. As we approach the 10 minute mark, seven minutes remain here. And you mentioned Lycan Gang was only four points off the lead coming in. They were about two or three teams ahead of RX Performance getting to the barbells, so potentially a chance to pass them up in this event as well. Team Ice Barrel with 10 reps remaining. Team Scandinavian is dead even and was stronger than the 90s trend right now. Final couple of reps for Ice Barrel and they're gonna rest with that last one so they can clean, go right into their front squats. And a really popular strategy that was made famous from the DT workout that's been around forever of just saving the last rep before you transition to the next movement with the barbell. Now front squats and this, yeah, that was not where we need to be with the synchronization. And now Ice Barrel is getting that sorted out. They gotta be careful because they're all over the place. Yeah. Uh, this, I don't know if the, if the synchronization's at the top, that's one thing, but if it's at the bottom, they clearly got away with a few right there. Yeah, definitely not what you'd expect when you hear the word synchronization. Also kind of curious, Brooke Wells glancing into the stands. I wonder if she's looking up at someone there who's cueing them on something. Like and gang. Trying to keep pace with the leaders here. And Tommy Marquez hanging with us in the booth, and he's saying she's probably looking up at the video boards. She can't see them on the floor, but she can see them up there and kind of check to make sure that she's not moving too fast or too slow. Well, Paige Powers just dropped the barbell. They're not getting credit for that one. Well, now they do a rep. We're... I, I don't know how to explain that. I'm not, not sure how that works out, but Team Ice Barrel is going to get across the finish line. 11.55.30 seconds unofficially for them. If that holds, they will win the event. 13.59 is now the second top time. Well, we got a great shot of the Scandinavian team there, and that is a beautiful synchronization that they're showing, checking in with their judge on every rep, and a great set of front squats there to close things out for them. The Scandinavians in 12.31. 0.10 seconds as they pass stronger than a 90s trend. Stronger than a 90s trend is now done as well. And we were not in the brief, so we don't know exactly what was said for the synchronization, but usually it is at the bottom. 
Yeah, and it just looked different what the uh, Ice Barrel team was doing compared to the others. But if you are the athletes on the floor, you can't do anything except for accept what your judge tells you. If they say it's good, it's good. If they say it's not, it's not. And I always would advise athletes to follow that protocol. And then whatever happens after the fact, appeals or otherwise, you know, that's the best you can do as an athlete on the floor. Fearless Misfits and the Lycan Gang. Your leader's on the floor right now. Checking with the movement standards, we do have the uh, the written versions of them here. It says the synchro portion is at the top of the front squat with the hips and knees extended. And there's there you go. the explanation that we were needing. So at the top is where the synchronization is. And again, not something we're used to seeing it usually occurs at the bottom. So Team Ice Barrel at 11.55.30 seconds. They're going to pick up the victory. They came in in 11th place overall. That's going to rocket them up the overall standings. And while we were sorting out all of that, Liking Gang and Rx performance both got in kind of mid, I fifth, the sixth in the heat or so. So the good performance, not as good as we saw this morning, but still will be lurking towards the top of the leaderboard for sure. The plus Ultra's on the left. You can see the synchronization at the top. Kyra Milligan, Jesse Smith, and Devin Kim. And seventh place in the heat there. Would have expected them to do a little bit better on the teamwork and synchronization part there. Well, that's lane number five. That's Krager meets training culture. Yeah. And lane nine is Team Frog Rips. DeRoy Walton and Campos are in. Talk with that Tiger Meat training culture team this morning. They met each other for the first time this week. One of them's from Germany, one from Spain, and Carson Wolf from Underdogs Athletic out in Vegas. But they've teamed up together to have some fun here. And they definitely were having fun this morning as well. That's Team Barine coming across. Conquer Cuties and Base Wellness still out there on the floor working. That team Barine, that um, Butcher's Lab team. They were in fourth place coming in, off to a pretty good start on day one as well. Reebok crew is in, Scuds, Baznet, Fuliano. Now about a minute to go before we hit the time cap. That's base wellness coming in. Some of the teams out on the floor were still here were some of the best online qualifiers that we saw. Base Wellness, fourth place, and Conquer Cuties, third place to get into this competition. Dixie Land Delight and Team Frog Rips. As Frog Rips is in, this is Dixie Land Delight with less than 30 to go. Final seconds here for the women, and it's Team Ice Barrel that's going to pick up the event win going sub 12, 11.55.30 seconds. Paige Powers, Bailey Rail, and Sydney Wells. Pardon me, Brooke Wells. Saw Sydney as an individual still in that mindset right now. A little, little subtle victory dance there for Paige Powers. And they were amongst the leaders coming off the handstand push-ups. Great shot of the synchronization on the double unders for training partners Bailey Rail and Paige Powers there. And then chipping the way through the barbell reps, we did see them take some big breaks at time, but they were also able to do some big sets. It wasn't clear who was going to win early, but in the end, they were able to get the barbell reps done fastest. 
and walk away with an event win that, quite frankly, they were really in need of after maybe not the finishes they expected this morning on events one and two. Unofficial results for event number three as we are at the halfway point now for the women and their elite team competition. 11.55.30 seconds for Team Ice Barrel. Team Scandinavian, they're going to help their cause out with that second place finish. Trying to move up from eighth place overall. Stronger than a 90s trend will finish in third. The Lycan gang, they're hanging tough. They take fourth. Let's go down to Lauren Khalil, who's with Team Ice Barrel. I don't even know. Tell me, you made it to the barbell. That is when the team pulled ahead. Were you changing your game plan watching the lanes in front of you that were staggered? No, I don't think we, yeah, really were paying attention too much to the lanes that were ahead of us, but more of like the game plan that we went in and then just changed it on the fly depending on how each of us were feeling. All excellent individual athletes, a little bit of timing issues on those front squats. How did you reset, make sure you regather your thoughts and still able to pull out the win? Um, I mean, I think that's exactly it. We would just stop and reset because once we did that, we would get back onto a rhythm. Also, like doing the worm event before, like we are individuals, so working as a team is very different. We're not very like, we're not very good at the worms, but I do think that that kind of transferred over in sync and we could pull it off. How often does this team get together to actually practice synchro work? No, not very often. <laughs> we get together just to have fun mostly. <laughs> well, you ladies are doing excellent. Congratulations on the event win. Good luck the rest of the weekend. Thank you. 100 points for Team Ice Barrel, and as a result, they're going to go from 11th up to 7th unofficially. The Lycan Gang, they now occupy the top spot in the overall standings all by themselves. 272 points for them. RX Performance out of Sweden, they're going to sit in second place by just four points, and then stronger than a 90s trend. They move up from 5th to 3rd. Yeah, Lycan Gang. Very consistent performance, reminiscent of Gabby McGowie on the individual side. No event wins, but third, third, and fourth, about as good as you can ask for. They'll be your leaders halfway through the competition. It's the Lycan gang at the halfway point. One day remaining for the elite women's teams. We are not done from Bayfront Park in Miami. The men's team's coming up next. Stay with us here at Tier Wadapalooza.
Day number three of competition at the 2024 Tier Wadapalooza comes to a close as we are down to the final two heats for the elite teams of men. And after 12 years of celebrating fitness, the Tier Wadapalooza is heading to SoCal. Huntington Beach will be the setting for our second flagship event this September. Miami and SoCal as Tier Wadapalooza is now by Coastal. You can scan the QR code that was on the screen to learn more. Thanks for being with us, everybody, here in Miami. I'm Sean Woodland with Tommy Marquez. Brian Friend has moved down to the competition floor at Flagler. The rain has started to move in. We're going to keep the event as prescribed here, despite the weather. And it is uno, dos, tres. And there's some rhyme to the reason for the name. In the first portion, one athlete will be working, collecting reps at a time. The second portion, the 240 synchro double unders, two athletes will be working at a time. And in the final part, three barbells, varying weights, three athletes will be collecting reps at a time. Let's talk about keys to success for these teams of three here in this third event of the day. Well, with so many moving parts, varying loads on the barbell, varying movements up on that wall, you have to know your role based on your skill skill set as it each athlete on the team and then cycle for the win. We've seen some impressive moves from teams on the women's side on that barbell cycle. It's a really good opportunity to make up some ground. Lane assignments here for this first of two heats in uno, dos, tres. Keep an eye on Krypton. They're going to be in lane number 10. That's the team of Alex Smith, Austin Spencer, and Christoph Horbath. And I think this they are a prime example of knowing your role. Each athlete with varying skill sets, Alec a gymnast, Christoph very strong, Austin a, a nice blend in between. I want to look at how they maneuver themselves through this particular test. Another team that could do well here, Conquer Athlete. They come in in sixth place overall. Tony Facchini, Tyler Cook, and Will Carter. The athletes have yet to take the floor as the fans that were smart enough to bring some rain gear have stayed in their seats and are braving the elements. The rain more or less has held off today. This is the first time it's reared its head here at Flagler. This is just one of those, I was saying with Brian, iconic settings in the sport. The Miami skyline in the back under the lights, in the mid-setting. Like Lauren Khalil is out there on the competition floor. Uh, Lauren, what's going on here with this event? So far, we don't see the elite individuals out here yet, but the judges and volunteers, they have been wiping down the stations. It also looks like they are going to bring risers potentially to use for those handstand push-ups as those are much drier than the floor right now but we saw on the first day with the elite individuals that they had towels out here the teams are probably going to want to do the same thing to wipe down those barbells wipe down their mats to be as efficient as possible and as safe as possible to get through this workout there are contingency plans in place for every event here in the event weather does become a factor. So those are being discussed right now. We will see if this event will change at all. Again, safety is of the utmost importance here at Tier Wadapalooza. And we've already seen adjustments be made to some of the individual events. Could happen here with the teams to make sure the athletes are as safe as possible. And that is a byproduct of their direct partnership with the PFAA. They're working with the Athlete Association to make sure they're adhering to best practices as well as, you know, combining forces in terms of the experience of the athletes and knowing how things play out on the floor as well as touching base with the event organizers who have a dis distinct knowledge of the inner workings and what is reasonable for these events in terms of adjustments. Uno dos tres is the name of the event. We'll take a look at the description as it is written right now in case things change. We can update you on what that is. I'm trying to dry things off out there for the, the wall walks, but this is what we have. The 20 wall walks, not wall balls. 40 strict handstand push-ups and the 60 handstand push-ups. 
They'll do the synchro double unders, and then it's the synchro barbell movements, all three men working at a time. Mike Richards and Noah Dean, two of our talented floor announcers there. Two of the best MCs to do it. You guys have been around a long time. That is a tough job. Oh. We're going to push back things by about five minutes as they figure things out on the floor and get the equipment ready. Stay with us. We'll be right back with the first heat of the elite teams of men here at Tier Wadapalooza.
We are now set to go for the final event for the men's elite teams here at Tier Wadapalooza. Thanks to the volunteers here at Bayfront Park for doing their best to get the floor dry and ready for competition. We are going to go ahead as planned. Uno, dos, tres. This is the final event of the day for these athletes. Yeah, they're going to start with 20 wall walks and adjust to hand, strict handstand push-ups, handstand push-ups. One athlete working at a time while one holds a handstand. Then we're going to switch to synchro double unders. And then finally, all three athletes are going to work at once on a barbell as we progress through a cycle with varying weights. And there were some discussions in the break about changing this event. That is obviously not going to happen. And we will do this as planned. Keys here to this event, Tommy. Well, shout out to the team that made this possible because the keys are know your role. With so many different moving parts in this workout, it's important to know your skill set and the role it plays within this framework. And then obviously, cycle for the win with the three different barbell loadings and movements. It's important to make quick cycles. We saw female team athletes be able to overtake the lead in those final set of front squats. So fast cycling works. Here are the lane assignments for the first of two heats. We mentioned Krypton in lane number 10. They, they will definitely be a team to watch here. The trio of Alex Smith, Austin Spencer, and Christoph Horvath, and also Conquer Athlete down there in lane number three. They come in in sixth place overall, looking to move their way into the top three. Complex Wadex in lane 15 coming up. A really strong finish in Worms Can't Swim. Had the second best time overall from the early heat. They come in ninth place overall with 130 points as complex Wadex. Three, two, one, go! Opening heat for the elite teams of three for the men is underway. 20 wall walks to start. One partner has to be holding a handstand. The other one is resting. It looks like big Christoph Horvath should be relegated to handstand holds, at least for the most part. I mean, he can be a good asset for these wall walks because he has such long arms chewing up big steps along the way. But the beauty of this test is you can make adjustments based on your team's skill set. So if they need Christoph to do fewer strict handstand push-ups, he can. You can see him signaling to Alex Smith letting him know where his teammate is. I like that communication there. Well, it's pretty wet out there still, despite the best efforts of the team to, to dry off the floor. They did a great job doing it to make sure that we can do this event as prescribed. The team's having to be careful and navigate that wet surface here. 20 reps of the wall walks before it's 40 strict handstand push-ups, and you can divide them up however you want. The wall walk movement first showing up in CrossFit competition during the Open back in 2021, and it was part of a, a thread that Dave Castro wove through the entirety of the season before it showed up at the CrossFit Games. A lot of teams are taking towels with their own. They might be using their own shirts, too, just to try to get this as dry as possible. That's Complex Wadex, the team that had a real solid performance earlier in Worms Can't Swim. They took second place in that event to put themselves in ninth place overall after starting the day on that bike race event that was a 5K run back in 17th. A lot of these athletes now taking their shirts off to use it to dry. Let's be honest, it's CrossFit. Most of the time, those weren't going to last long anyway. Most of the time, the shirt is just a towel for later when you get sweaty, anyways. Team started to transition into the second part of the three movements on this station, and that's the 40 strict handstand push up. Same rules apply with the wall walks. One athlete needs to be holding a handstand while the other one works in one rest. That's Max Lift, Australia, James Thomas, Riley Smith, and Riley Martin. Fifteenth place overall after the first two events. 
Now in lane three, this is Conquer Athlete. Sixth place to begin this event. This is a pretty talented team, Max Lift. Out of Australia, trio of athletes competing at the Oceania semifinals, all 12 or better in their respective divisions this past season. Midwest Cowboys on your screen in lane number 12, Matt Pratt, DJ Kessler, and Briley Smith. 23rd place overall with 53 points. Canadians from the East right now, your leader in this heat, Marcelo Clarizio, Nicholas Goudreau, and Damien Conciatori are on the regular handstand push. If you can, kip this portion, 60 reps here. After they finish these 60, it's on to the double unders. 240 synchro double under reps, two partners working at a time, one will rest on that movement. Midwest Cowboys is Matt Pratt is going to be the man holding the handstand. Canadians from the East continue to lead here. Nicholas Goudreau is now taking his turn at the wall. No shirt on, black shorts. They got some athletes with semifinal experience, both Goudreau and Clarizio, 33rd and 34th respectively at North America East this past year. And it's going to be Goudreau and Clarizio on the 240 synchro double unders. They're the only team to this portion of the event. After these 240 reps, though, we'll move to those three barbells for synchro deadlifts, hand cleans, and front squats. Midwest Cowboys, yellow shorts. Going through their 60 handstand push-ups as we are past the five minute mark. 17 minute time cap here. Canadians from the East, still the only team on the synchro double unders. 13th place overall, Canadians from the East with 99 points. Now the Fox Ferret Manatee men moving on to the double unders. Impressive showing from Canadians from the east on the wall there. They're about 50 seconds out of, ahead of the second place team in terms of getting to those synchro double unders. That is a significant lead very early on. You got three teams who have started their set of 240 synchro double unders. That's Krypton, Austin Spencer, and Christoph Horvath on the left in the all black. The Fox Fair Manatee men were next to them. These are your leaders. Canadians from the East, Nicholas Goudreau and Damien Conciatore on the double unders, and Goudreau's gonna swap out for Marcello Collegio. Krypton on the right side of your screen in the all black. They sit in second place, followed by Max Lift Australia, the two of those teams battling for second. But half the field is on to the double unders now. Krypton in the middle of your screen. Alex Smith and Austin Spencer. It's the Canadians from the east. They're in lane number six. Now center screen. Who Stay in the lead here. They were by far the first team to get to this portion of the event, and they are just about done. And they will make their way to the barbells to start their 60 synchro deadlifts. They are done. Three different weights on the barbells, 135, 155, and 165. 60 synchronized deadlifts here.
looks to be a little confusion there on the setup because the athletes do have to move their bars out into the working area. Zadius from the East are all by themselves on this portion of the event. 60 reps here before going into 40 synchro hang cleans and then 20 synchro front squats. Now keep in mind, because this is a little confusing in the women's side, when they get to the front squats, the synchronization occurs at the top, not the bottom. The synchronization counts when you are together at the top. And that is pretty much the same for all three movements. So full extension on the deadlift, bar resting in the front rack position, knees and hips extended on the hang clean as well, similar for the front squat. Canadians from the East are still the only team on the barbells here. Just blowing away the field in this opening heat. About nine minutes gone by here. They're halfway through these deadlifts already and no one's even to the barbells yet. Coming out of the double under, or coming into the double unders, they had about a 50 second lead over se second and they've already expanded on that in this last section. They've been at this portion of the event for a little more than a minute now and now we have another team working their way to the barbells max lift australia has now made their way to the barbell riley martin riley smith and james thomas Riley Smith is in the middle, Thomas is in front, Martin's in the back. And now Krypton and Fox Ferret Manatee men, along with the Midwest Cowboys, getting to the final three movements of this event, but they're gonna have a hard time catching the Canadians from the East. This is now a battle for second. Canadians from the East are on their synchro hang power cleans. That's the Midwest Cowboys on their 60 this is, deadlifts. This is probably the tricky portion given the rain component. Grip on the barbell as well as footing with a more dynamic movement. Athletes looking a little cautious there with some weights that they're usually be, being able to slang around pretty easily. Conciatore is gonna move to the back. Goudreau. Heads to the heaviest barbell at 165, and Clarisio in the middle at 155. Max Lift Australia. In the back half of their set of 60. Six minutes remain here before we hit that 17 minute time gap. First of two heats for the elite men's teams. The top two teams are on the screen right now on the left. That's the Canadians from the east on the right, Max Lift Australia. But Canadians from the east are all by themselves in first place. Max Lift Australia has got to start worrying about Krypton and Fox Ferret Manatee men for that second place spot in this heat. Canadians from the east are rotating every single set of five reps. Look like they're starting to fatigue a little bit. I, I don't know if other teams will be able to catch them, but maybe a team like Krypton where they can rip off some bigger chunks of these hang cleans, at least close the gap a little bit because they're taking significant breaks to rotate every five. Well, they're the only team that's even on the hang cleans right now. Everyone else on the deadlifts. I think Krypton just is about to start their hang cleans. So Christoph Horvath. Yep. Krypton now on to the second of three barbell movements. There's just two teams here in this heat on the hang cleans. Canadians from the east and Krypton. Yeah, Krypton is in the background there. Your upper right hand part, now middle screen is, they've advanced through four of their hang cleans and next to them in lane 11, the Fox Ferret Manatee men also on to the second barbell movement. It looks like Krypton got a few no reps there because only getting four, they it looked like they did significantly more than that on their first set. You can see Christoph Horvath was signaling to them five, so that's a, that's a good sign for Canadians from the East. Krypton with Christoph Horvath in front, Austin Spencer behind him, and Alex Smith on the 135 pound barbell. Getting things sorted out. Canadians from the East are now on to their front squats. And remember, synchronization at the top here. All that matters is they get to the end of the rep, standing up tall, 
knees and hips extended, bar in the front rack position for it to for it to count. Well, Goodrow just did a rep, and none of his teammates did either. Now, as long as they're at the top, that will count. Well, it's important to note the back athlete didn't actually squat, so the middle athlete going for a squat clean, which is, is allowed for the first rep, it was a wasted movement there because the other athlete didn't follow suit. That's just a component of this team synchronization aspect. You can have two athletes on the same page, one doesn't, and you can lose precious reps. Conquer athlete is starting to challenge for a spot inside the top three right now. So keep an eye on them as you take a look at Canadians from the East and Krypton on your screen. Canadians from the East are halfway through their set of 20. Fox Ferret Manatee men, they're in the back half of their cleans. Conquer Athlete looks like they have passed Krypton now for third place in the heat. Canadians from the East are done, and they will take the heat 1358.31 seconds. Less than three to go before we hit the time cap. And now a tight battle for second place between Concord Athlete, Fox Ferret Manatee Men, and Krypton. Krypton in the middle of your screen there in lane 10, right next to them. In lane 11 is the Fox Ferret Manatee Men. We got some inside info that the Fox Ferret Manatee Men got that nickname from one of their family members, apparently one of the athletes. I think it was Daniel Kutz's mom had a nickname like that. I'd like to know the story behind that yeah, one. Yeah, I'm sure. The Fox Ferret Manatee men were having some problems with the synchronization at the top. Less than two to go before we hit the time cap. That's Conquer Athlete halfway through their front squats. And you saw Will Carter just kind of shove Fakini to the back barbell. Final couple reps for Krypton. And they're going to try to figure out this transition. That... And now taking some time to huddle and talk things over. And Conquer Athlete is in. Some interesting, maybe some miscommunication between the Krypton crew. They. Now Krypton onto the. Front squats, resting on that final rep of the hand cleans to go into this set of 20. Fox Ferret Manatee men, now in the middle of your screen, they're getting started on their front squats as well. This is the fight for third place in the heat. The Fox Ferret Manatee men do have the advantage of having the Krypton team in front of them. We'll see if these teams can even get in inside the time cap. We got 15 seconds left, five reps to go for Krypton. They're looking to go unbroken here. Last rep, and Krypton's going to make it with about three seconds to spare. But it's the Canadians from the East, 1358.31 seconds to set the top time with one heat remaining. And it was never in doubt here. No, the Canadians from the East put on a clinic. You can see some athletes, some teams still just getting partway through the barbell portion, but they took control from the outset. Coming out of the wall portion with the wall walk, strict handstand push-ups and traditional handstand push-ups, they built themselves nearly a one-minute lead just on that first section alone. And by the time they made the transition to the double-unders, they were nearly halfway through before anyone joined them, and they expanded upon that lead. They got through almost the entirety of their deadlifts before anyone joined them on the barbell. 
and it was no question whether they were going to be able to bring it home. Sticking to short sets on the hang cleans, and they're able to break up the front squats into two big chunks. It's a nice performance for the Canadians from the East. Heat one win in the final event of day number one for these teams. Unofficial results from the opening heat and uno dos tres. The Canadians from the East are numero uno, 1358.31 seconds. Conquer athlete, they put on a late charge. They're gonna finish in second ahead of Krypton Max Lift Australia. We'll take fourth and the Mayhem Outlaws. The first team to not make the time cap, but they had the most reps done. They will take fifth place. E2. Coming up next as we close out day three of competition here at Tier Wadapalooza. No better place to be on Saturday night than at Flagler under the Miami lights. Thanks for being with us as we close out day number three of competition here at Tier Palooza. I'm Sean Woodland with Tommy Marquez, and we have Brian Friend out there at Flagler. Uno dos tres is going to wrap things up on day number one of competition for the elite teams. And this event is essentially broken into three parts. The first part, they're going to do some work upside down, one primary athlete working at a time. The second portion, some synchro double unders, two athletes working. And then on the final portion, three different barbell movements, all three athletes working at a time, hence the name Uno Dos Trace. What are the dos keys to success here? Numero uno, Sean. Dwayne The Rock Johnson told us back in 99 to know your role, and I think that's important here for these athletes. Understand your skill set and how it fits into this complex event where there's varying workouts and opportunity to really highlight your skills. And then cycle for the win. With three different weights on the barbell, being able to stay in sync and rip big chunks of those movements is going to be key. Here are the teams who are in the second and final heat. Your overall leaders will be on the floor at the same time. Team Pixel and Team Goad right now tied atop the overall standings at 192 points. Lane eight is that where Team Goad will be working. That is the team that the fans think will take this event along with the Heat One staff, Justin Medeiros, Willie George, and Jay Crouch. This is an interesting pick because one thing that Willie has typically struggled with in his career is some of the handstand push-ups and being upside down. He's had some shoulder injuries in the past, but the way this is formatted, you can account for that, especially with someone like Medeiros, who is so good upside down. Second and final heat underway, 13 minutes, 58.31 seconds from the Canadians from the East is the top time. We start with the 20 wall walks. And now the Panchiks are fielding a team of two. This is RX Smart Gear. I think it's Scott and Spencer are out there by themselves. Unfortunately, due to injuries, a couple of their athletes, both Luke Parker and Nick Matthew, aren't able to continue in the competition in celebration of fitness and fun and just the overall environment here at Tier Wadapalooza as a fitness festival. They wanted to let two of the Panchik brothers go out there and throw down side by side. And honestly, 
That's a pretty darn good pick. If you remember Scott Panchuk's first career win at the CrossFit Games, came in 2021 on the Wall Walk event. He's pretty darn good upside down. Scott and Spencer Panchik. Down a man, but still out here throwing down, and always a pleasure to watch Scott Panchik, one of the best in the sport to ever do it. Throw down. The Olbrays, Holmbrays. Team that comes in in fourth place overall with 172 points, just 20 points out of the lead. They are towards the front here. No Olsen, Chandler Smith, and Tola Marocchino as Marocchino is now on the wall walks. Chandler Smith holding the handstand, and No Olsen taking off his shirt. As is tradition, John. They trace Leches in lane nine. They're in eighth place overall, but the trio of Vellner, Mayer, and Bjorven Carl Gumitz, and they can do some damage here. I, I think this is a sneaky pick right here for the event win because BKG is good at everything, but he's a technician with his movement. Efficiency upside down, especially with strict handstand push-ups is great. Pat Vellner, great upside down, big gymnastics background. Travis Mayer knows how to go just full bore when you need him, particularly in the team competition. His team Pixel, Roman Krennikov, closest to the camera, taking a break. It's Saxon Panchik is on the handstand hold, and Jorge Fernandez is now on the handstand push-ups. 60, or pardon me, 40 strict handstand push-ups that they need to complete here. After this, it's the 60 handstand push-ups, so you can kip those. The weather was a factor here earlier, caused a bit of a delay. Brian Friend has more on that. Yeah, Sean got a chance to talk to several of the athletes in heat one as they were leaving the floor. They said for the most part they had to be a lot more cautious on the handstand push-up work. And for the almost all the teams, they had to reduce the number of sets on the hang cleans as opposed to the original plan. Keep an eye on that as we move through this event and get to those barbell movements. Spencer and Scott Panchik continuing to rotate on the handstand push-ups. They're hanging with the big guys here, with the teams of three. The Ombre Ombres are already to their kipping handstand push-ups. One of the first few teams to get there. No Olsen just blasted a big chunk of strict handstand push-ups. Olsen back to the wall, Moroccan you holding the handstand here. Left side of your screen, that's the Ombres Ombres. Team Pixel now sitting in second place. Trace Leches is in the top three as well. He got a good push from BKG on that last set of handstand push ups. The Ombre Hombres are just about done with this portion of the event. They look to be the first team to advance to the jump rope, and they are 240 single double unders. Noah Olson, this is kind of a home field advantage for Noah, an event where you know, he really kind of made a name for himself at Tier Wadapalooza. Very comfortable competing here. There's Team Pixel trying to get through their final handstand push ups. Chandler Smith and Tola Maracano, still the only two men on their synchro double unders. Trace Leches is just about done as well. We'll be keeping an eye on them. But a little bit of a little bit of missteps from Ombre Ombres. A couple different slip-ups on the double unders in their first set could open the door for one of these other teams. I mean, that's three trips already in their first 30 reps on the double unders. In the white shirts, that's Pat Vellner and Travis Mayer. They are on their synchro double unders. To the left of Maracanio and Noah Olson from Ombre Hombres. 13.58 is the time to beat for Canadians from the East. And now the Pixel squad Roman Krenikoff and Saxon Panchik onto the synchro double unders. Team Gowat next to them. Willie George and Justin Medeiros on the synchro double unders. Now, these are the teams that you wanted to see duke it out, and here they are, middle of the floor, going head to head. We're used to seeing a lot of these athletes as individuals in the final heat at the CrossFit Games. 
that's what's great about Tier Waterpalooza. We get to see them all paired up, going head to head in this really cool teams of three format. Really, George and Justin Madaris on the left side. Jake Crouch is going to swap in for George. Travis Mayer and Pat Bellner in the middle in the white shirts. And now Team Tier between Olsen and Smith and Mayer and Vellner, they're on to the 240 synchro double unders. Hombre Hombres, Noah Olsen and Chandler Smith continuing to stay in front. Go watch closing the gap though. They have really, really pushed the pace here, ripping off some big sets. They have, they've made up almost 60 or 70 reps on these double unders so far. Hombre Hombres continue to lead. How about the Pantic brothers? Spencer and Scott. Go watch just had a little misstep. It, Justin Medeiros walked across the floor to go set his jump rope down, but that meant his team couldn't compile reps while he was doing it because he had to be standing behind the back line. Costing them a few reps. Medeiros is there on the far left side of your screen, being covered up by Pat Vellner, but that's where the athletes need to rest. And now the Ombre Hombres are on to the barbell. 60 synchro deadlifts. For the Ombre Hombres, who coming in fourth place overall, they're only four points back of Team Tier for third, and only 20 points back of Gowad and Pixel for the overall lead. No surprise, they've got Chandler Smith out there on the front barbell, the heaviest for the deadlift. If you remember Chandler breaking the 600 pound barrier at the Rogue Invitational this past season. Well, and it was deadlifts where we really first noticed him back in the old regional days. Back when there was the 400 pound, 405 deadlift for reps. I believe it was the 2016 regional when he was trying to chase down Ben Smith and company. Made that thing look like a tinker toy. Team Gowat, they're on to the synchro deadlifts. Justin Medeiros, Jay Crouch, and Willie George. Hombre, hombres, Team Gowat and Team Pixel, your top three right now. There's Team Pixel with Saxon Panchik in front, Jorge Fernandez in the middle, and Roman Krenikov in the back. Hombre, hombres have passed the halfway point on the left side of your screen on their way to 60 reps before they will transition into the hang cleans. And Chandler Smith has stayed on that front barbell the entire time here. 135, 155, 165 is the weight on the barbell. No surprise he's out front the entire time. If you, if you really think about it, it's what, 30% of his one at max? Do this all day. If that. Team Pixel on the right side making the transition. Roman Krenikov moves it up to the 165 pound barbell. That was true coach train call that you just saw. They sit in fourth place right now in the heat. And now Spencer and Scott, the Panchik brothers, onto the barbells. That's true coach train call in lane 15. Brian Friend has more on them. Yeah, it's a virtual who's who of CrossFit in the male division out here, but the top online qualifiers out of Europe, Bartek Lipka, Mikko Liliorg, and Kevin Jures are hanging tough in a very demanding workout. It's a cool thing about Wadapalooza, invited athletes and online qualifiers get to go toe for toe. True coach train cult, they are hanging tough here. Top four right now in the heat. 26th place overall coming into this, into this event is true coach train cult. These are your top two still in the heat. Ombre Ombre's on the left side onto the hang clean. Chandler Smith still just mauling that 165 pound barbell. Team Pixel, about 10 reps back ahead of them. And it's worth mentioning that although these are your leaders, the other two Panchik brothers got to the barbell, assuming they did the same amount of reps, ahead of the strapping of the lads, one of your top five teams so far. 
not just too shabby. Just your friendly reminder, the Panchik family is fitter than you. <laughs> All the teams on the final portion of this event. Again, the time to beat 13.58 from the Canadians from the East. I don't know how much longer that's going to last. And in lane six, just so we know, they're <laughs> making the Panchiks do the two heaviest barbells, 155 and 165. Yeah, they, they've probably seen their exploits in the past. They saw Panchik at the, Scott Panchik as one of the final two uh, athletes lifting in the 2019 clean, clean lifting event. And they're like, yeah, you know what? 135 isn't going to be enough for you. Hombre, hombres continue to lead. Team Pixel is starting to cut into that a little bit. And team Gowat still sits in third place here. Hombre, hombres back to work. Trying to regain some of the ground that they just surrendered to Pixel. Philip Moroccano now on the 165 pound barbell. There's Trace Neches in the white shirts. Albrecht's right into the front squats. 20 reps here. And now a break for the Albrecht's as Team Pixel is almost done with their hand cleans. 13.58, the time to beat here. And a good sign for the, the Albrecht's. They were just four points behind Team Tier for the third spot overall. And Tier just got to their hand clean, so they can hold on. They're going to make up some serious points and climb up the leaderboard. Once again, the synchronization in this movement occurs at the top. Albrecht's inside five reps to go here. Looking to pick up their first event win of the competition, and they will do it. 12.55.02 beating Canadians from the East time by more than a minute. Lucky volunteer at the finish line. Got a free hug from Noah Olsen to boot. <laughs> Team Gowat is past. Team Pixel now for second place in the heat and second place in the event. Still very much attainable for Gowat. 13.58 is now the second best time. The J. Crouch Maderas and Willie George. And I think they realized it because they set the bar down and saw almost like they took a look at Pixel and realized they could close it in and hurried up their finish. And they are done. And they're going to take second place in the heat and second in the event. And Pixel is going to take third as the Canadians from the East looking like they're going to settle for fourth place in the event with their top time from heat number one. There's Trace Leches and the Panchik brothers, Spencer and Scott. Trace Leches on their front squat. That's Pixel Train Cult. Just finishing, Annual Lakai, Fabio Benito Celis, and Guillaume Briand. Two final reps for Trace Leches. And they are done. All the other teams on the floor are on the hang cleans, including the duo of Spencer and Scott Panchik who have not been allowed to touch the 135-pound barbell. <laughs> hey, thanks for coming out. Less than two minutes to go before we hit the time cap. Twenty final front squats for Spencer and Scott. Oh boy, if they finish this under the cap as a team of two, I mean, only a handful of teams finished under the cap in the first heat. Spencer and Scott have yet to rest here. They've got three reps left. 
There's Team Tier on the left side. It's the Panchics who are going to take that race. How about that? Spencer and Scott Panchik. Across the finish line ahead of Team Tier. Oh boy, if I were Scott, I'd be letting him hear it right now. Especially <laughs> knowing that Dallin and Jason Hopper like to chirp at each other the way they do. Team Gorilla 911, they just came across Alex and Jeremy Vino and Jason Uday. Less than a minute to go, now 30 seconds before we hit the time gap. That's Team Evolve, Brandon Luckett in front there along with Nicholas Hecht and Joe Munno. Now the strapping young lads are in. James Sprague, Jack Farlow, and Benoit Boulanger. And they made up some good ground. They were, I think, the last team to get to the barbell and made up some significant ground there. Final seconds here. And it's the Ombre Ombres. 12.55.02 seconds, beating the top time from Heat 1 by more than a minute and picking up their first event win here at Tier Wadapalooza. And very similar to the team from the first Heat, they came out from the outset and led from the front. They were the first team off of the wall, making quick work of those wall walks, strict handstand push-ups and regular kipping handstand push-ups. Had a few trip-ups early on in the double-unders, but unfazed by that. There are plenty of experience amongst the trio and able to get to the barbell quickly, rip off some significant chunks. And Chandler Smith never let go of that heavy barbell for the deadlifts. And that gave him a distinct advantage with fewer switches and fewer rotations. And for the Ombre Ombres who came into this event in fourth overall, they're going to move up into the top three ahead of Team Tier and close the gap on both Pixel and Go Watch. 100 points for Noah Olson, Tola Maracano, and Chandler Smith. Coming in in 14th, fourth place overall. They will move up the overall standings. The only team to go sub 13. We thought Gowad finished ahead of Pixel. These are unofficial, so we'll have to take a look at that. Three seconds separating those two teams on these standings. Canadians from the East, we do know, do know that was the fourth best time from heat number one. And then Trace Leches will take fifth. Good finish for Trace Leches. They've been proving slowly. 11th in Worms Can't Swim. One of the athletes or one of the teams that a lot of people think could compete for the top spot here. Fifth place in this event will be their best of the day so far. Well, after 12 years of celebrating fitness, Tier is heading to Southern California. Huntington Beach will be the setting for our second flagship event Coming this September, Miami and SoCal. It's your Wadapalooza is now bi-coastal. You can scan the QR code to learn more. Certainly looking forward to seeing what the West Coast iteration of Tier Wadapalooza looks like. We're going to be down in Huntington Beach. Should be great weather that time of year. An iconic location on the West Coast. The Hombre Hombres. Picking up their first event win in the competition, and they get to talk to Brian Fred. No one wants all the action, but I'm going to save him for last. Tola, you're in good company here. These guys have had a lot of success here. How fun is it is to be out here competing with them? Yeah, like I said, after the last one, competing with two legends, so just having fun, and that was a really good that? one for us. I pop in real quick, because I feel, like, I feel like everybody's always asking Tola this, but like no one's recognizing like how much he's putting the team on his back. He's a phenomenal swimmer. His run-in's gotten better every single year, so like we're all, we're all even here, but he's a, more than just a contributing team member. He is like the reason we're able to do halfway decent right now, so he, I just, I just, this is like the second time someone's asked that. He deserves equal recognition for sure. Ah, you stole my thunder there. No problem, though. No, I'm going to let you close out the night. To all the fans of Miami, everyone who watches around the world, you've been competing here forever. Just spread the love, man. Yeah, absolutely love you guys. The Mr. Miami title is one that I don't take lightly. Hugely honored. We're happy to be able to represent for you, for the West Coast, for Maryland, uh, all over the United States. We're just having a good time out here, and uh, hopefully we can keep the ball rolling tomorrow. Thank you guys for everything today. We'll see you bright and early. Let's go. No strangers to success on Flagler. Well done tonight, guys. We'll see you tomorrow. Hombre, Hombre's 100 points. They now sit 
unofficially in third place with 272 points, and it is close in those top three. Only 16 points separating Pixel from the Ombres with three events remaining. And, yeah, like you mentioned, three tomorrow. Still plenty of opportunity for those top three to shuffle a little bit, but there's a little bit of a gap between the Ombre, Ombres and Team Tier. 24 points. I think you should be able to maybe see a push from Team Tier and keep this podium race interesting. Diamantized better every moment. Moment of the day was Team Ice Barrel in Uno Dos Tres. A team that a lot of people had earmarked to push for the front. Maybe didn't have the best start to the competition day, but you know what? It's not always how you start, it's how you finish. And they finished with a one next to their placement on this last event and 100 points to take in their pocket and maybe build some momentum for tomorrow. Unofficial standings for the women's side of the elite team competition, the Lycan Gang. A four-point lead on RX performance, stronger than the 90s trend with 244 points right now, unofficially occupy third place. And Team Scandinavian sits in fourth. And look at the, the collection of flags on the leaderboard. Truly an international contingent here for the women's division. One day remains here at Tier Wadapalooza. We'll get started at 10.41 a.m. local time with the Sandbag Send. And we wrap things up with Worm Fran for the men inside Flagler at 6.43. Thanks so much for being with us, everybody, on Saturday at Tier Wada Palooza for our entire crew here, Tommy Marquez, Brian Friend, and Lauren Khalil. I am Sean Woodland. We will see you back here on Sunday at Bayfront Park in Miami. What does it mean when people say America is a land of opportunity? It means the power to discover. To redefine yourself. To improve yourself. To challenge yourself. To realize there's more in you than you ever knew that you could do. It means giving people an open field to explore what they do best. With the best tools. The best training. The best technology in the world. We bring out the best in the people who serve. So you can be all you can be. obsessed with squeezing a little bit more out of me. I'm obsessed with taking really good care of me. I'm obsessed with wanting to be the best. There are a lot of potential paths to greatness. It starts with the hard work. A relentless commitment to self-awareness. An obsession with forward progress. Anyone has what it takes to be the best. Only the best. Obsess. It's okay to want to be strong. It's okay to want to have it all. Recover faster, go further. Diamantize ISO 100. Because settling is unsettling.
stretch, squat, stroke, stride, swing, spin. That's movement, and this is you. And because you were made to move, we want to move with you. Whether you compete for a living or train for life, we've developed a cutting-edge movement experience that's unlike anything else. Because we, like you, are constantly evolving. Our reconstructed platform features daily mobility paths that can be tailored to fit your lifestyle and athletic goals at a time, space, and pace that works for you. We'll build your foundation in here so you can perform out there, work harder, perform longer, and recover faster. Pliability. What's your path?